to show off the shirt. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be so fun. It is gonna be fun, I'm really excited. All right, it says meeting is now live on YouTube. What's up, Flexies? How What's are you? up? <laughs> so, so I'm gonna make sure that you don't hear me twice. Okay, now you can hear me. All right, guys, what's up, Flexies? I know we're uh, we're coming live at nine. I think it's nine fifteen tonight. Just it's been crazy. Just my schedule, so I do apologize that we don't have a you know. Usually we go on seven p.m., but with everything going on with my schedule, it's kind of hard. But let me tell you something: For the ones that actually came on tonight. You are in for such a treat. I and listen, no tissues tonight, okay? <laughs> no tissues, maybe for maybe laughing so hard. I like those. That it makes you pee your pants. Yes. 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 Get the diapers out. I am with my girlies. This is to the left. We have Michelle. To the right, we have Leah. Leah. Michelle. Yeah, Michelle, yeah. Leah, right, to the left, to my left, right. Yes, <laughs> yes, you got it Here, right. Raise left. your hand. <laughs> it says Wait, your name. <laughs> who's Leah? Who's Leah? With a real Leah, please stand up. <laughs> no, no, that was wrong. <laughs> I'm here. I'm, in, I'm sporting the most awesome shirt here. We're flexing the truth. I'm a flexi. I'm a flexi. Hang on. I'm a miracle on the other side. I'm a miracle. Aww. Boom. Boom. Wait till you see the other shirts that I'm going to have blessed and deserved. So y'all. Oh, well, I love it. I'm, I'm a miracle. I'm worthy. Another day blessed and deserved. I love and that. I love I'm it. So blessed and deserved to have, you know, Michelle and Leah, the resistance chicks out of Cincinnati, Ohio. What's up? What's up, guys? From me. I, when they told me they were from Cincinnati, Ohio, I was like, really you're not that far away we are right. not far yeah we're but these are my scrumptious cupcakes that i talk about all the time <laughs> never <laughs> been called that before ever they are, my, they are my godly sisters you know when i look for prayer i run to them um and they're just beautiful people inside and out and you're gonna get to see that but you guys listen sit back put the seatbelt on get some popcorn mm. You were in for a ride. We started when we did the interview in Tulsa in the hallway. So they, good. They, the girls were just walking down the hallway and God was like, you better talk to them. Like how many times are you going to let them keep walking by? And uh, I just started talking to them and we matched. We coordinated that. We, we, were, we, we literally matched. We that literally picture matched. is my favorite picture from the whole conference. Right? Yeah. And so what I look like, just, you know, give you a visual is I look like uh, if an Easter egg exploded. You did. Uh, with a, like a, a cupcake with like pink frosting. Yeah, cupcake yeah. with, absolutely. And we had so much fun. People were looking at us like, what is going on there? <laughs> they we were stand out together. I think we definitely as a trio stand out. Well, I what think are Kansas we going to do? We're going to have to coordinate our outfits in Tampa. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And we could walk in and have somebody play some music, like, mm, <laughs> like maybe even some sunglasses or something. A little wind machine. Yeah, with Chris in the middle oh, yeah. and us on the yeah. side. How about how about a, a glitter uh, a glitter ball? Yes. Ball, glitter, uh, boom. When we yes. walk, boom, just glitter, just burst. <laughs> It's a Holy Ghost glitter, baby. I love it. Just get you some. I will sprinkle some on get you. you some. <laughs> get some. We'll call it the freedom glitter. Freedom yeah. glitter. It could be red, white, and blue or silver. Oh, yeah. there you go. There this you is 10,000 people. Well, we're going to need a lot of glitter. That's a lot of glitter. <laughs> we are. So are you girls going to Tampa? We hope to. We hope to. Yes. The plan right now is uh, technically we haven't heard back from Clay yet. <laughs> Okay, well, that's going to happen because I'm right. going to be on the horn and you need to be there. We're, we're really excited about it. We definitely want to go for yeah. sure. We so, feel led to go. 
I want to, the first thing I want to talk about is, you know, <laughs> we're going to save that for a little later. What we first about. <laughs> okay. You guys are in for it. Let me when tell something you. gets too serious, just press the, the laugh button and then we'll go. So you had, listen to this guys. Now I, I cry about censorship and I, I went to them and because they've been censored so much. It's so cray cray. Far. Yeah. 78 videos. In 107 seven. now. Now 107. 107. It, it went up. It went yeah. up. After it went to up. you. And no. I, it was in four days. They four deleted days. 107 videos on our on our backup channel. As after deleting our main huge channel on our backup channel, they went and deleted 107. But what's videos. hilarious about it is that normally they would just take your channel down. No, they're like, oh, you have two strikes. And you're in a penalty period. So we're just going to keep removing these videos. And Michelle contested them because some of them were like, we're homesteaders. So canning corn, our honey harvest video from last year, literally honey. We have like we from bees. bees. Like here, let's, let me show you the, the harvest of honey that we have. Oh, I have gallons. one. I have one. So last year I Googled the different things that you could eat in your yard, like different kinds of edible weeds and it literally was like eat your weeds wild violet and things like that and that one i could see how like maybe they were thinking like it was i didn't even think about it i was like well maybe weed but like on further review you can see that we're talking about wild violets and things my favorite part was after i appealed i only appealed the first 14 and when they denied all 14 of those were the fir like the first eight of them were completely innocuous They're still inside like violence. violence they came back and they said we have carefully, carefully. reviewed your carefully. video carefully. carefully reviewed your video and we have decided that it does indeed violate our community standards for inciting violence so i'm thinking with the canning of the corn so you have to pressure can it and the corn was screaming oh, and yeah. i'm guessing it was just screaming yeah. and it was just yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. let me out. Let the me violence, out. The violence, the violence under there. pressure. Under yeah, pressure. so violent. I know, mm -hmm. I know. Cool. And like That's Bible cool. studies with Michelle. Yeah, just mm -hmm. fun stuff like that. I'm a Bible thumper. I'm beating people over the head with the Bible, and that's violent. Violent. Corn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, there's a scripture that says the kingdom of God suffers violence, violence and the, the violent take, take it by force. force. So, so I don't know. But but hey hey hey, did you hear? Maybe because you've been busy all day. Did you hear what Ron DeSantis signed into law in Florida? Yesterday? Oh, yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm suing. I'm moving. That's, <laughs> that's going to be a trickle down, though. That's yes. going to affect everybody. Uh, first of all, other states are going to join on. Okay. Well, tell everybody, somebody, one tell of us, tell the viewers what this is all about. Ron DeSantis has made it so that people can sue big tech for up to $100,000 for censorship. For censorship. Now, but wait, the video though, when the reporters were asking Ron DeSantis, like, so are you just doing this because Trump is like in Florida? And he's like, well, that, that actually might play out well for him, but this is for everyday Floridians. Yeah. And it was just so funny because the way he takes on the media is like, it's very Trumpy. He's actually. such a boss. And he but laughed. The whole room and the whole, the whole room stood up and started clapping. It was epic. I, I just love this guy. I love Ron But I think DeSantis. it's gonna affect everybody. I think I think that we're gonna see, and I told you, Chris, about I think I did. I don't know. I had a, a dream a couple of years ago where we were all frozen, like a bunch of people were frozen. We were fighting this epic battle, kind of like at the end of Chronicles of Narnia, and Aslan comes and blows on everybody, and they're not stoned anymore. And we all became unfrozen in my dream. And as soon as I woke up, we weren't, we did, hadn't even had our channel deleted at that point. Um, but I knew that's all of us that have been censored. Yeah. We're all going to become unfrozen. I think that YouTube is going to be forced to give back every channel and every video yes. that they ever deleted. You're going to rue the day. I, I, I totally believe that. I totally believe that. And I don't understand. So you're making honey and they said it's violent. Yes. They just put every I video, think, all 107 of the videos were for violence. inciting violence. You're inciting violence by making honey. Yeah. But, but here's the funny thing. Like, here's the thing. Yo, YouTube. Yo, YouTube. If like, we really were inciting violence for 107 mm -hmm. videos, like we should be gone. We should be in jail. Because that, no, we, we should, should be, be, where's the FBI? <laughs> FBI? Any, because any that's, FBI. that's some serious stuff right there like if i if, like if you're really inciting violence that's that's pretty serious like i don't believe that that's free speech you go, 107 videos ah, you're good stay on 
<laughs> so we're just like, we're just like, you know what? We're on BitChute, we're on Rumble, we're on Brighteon. We got our Facebook still streams. So of all you, things, Twitch, um, DLive, Clout Hub, DLive, man. And there's so many other platforms. We're still waiting on Frank's speech. Yo, Mike Lindell. Get it together. Can man. we get, can we get something going, brother? We need you. We need you, Mike. I heard, I heard Donald Trump. He, his, his website he's got right now is just a way for him. Here's the thing. I don't feel so bad. Did you hear all the different platforms I have? Dude, the president of the United States can't even get his message out to where Facebook won't allow anything in the voice of Trump. Meaning if you play his videos, like dude's the president, dude, at least and was president for four years. Hello. And we can't play to do his video. It would like, make sense if what he is was like literally in jail and convicted for something because oh, he yeah. was the most insane right. criminal of all time. Right, right, right. Up, man. Baby Trump. That is how I got my nickname. I know. I, I know. was on Trump's Facebook page mm -hmm. doing the YMCA for yep. two minutes. And baby Trump was birthed and got banned for life. Isn't that... <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so it's so stupid. I so stupid. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. So I'm sorry, we so went on dangerous. this big long trail. You were going somewhere with the with the censorship thing. Oh, there. that's exactly where here's the one thing that I love about these girls. Here's the scary thing. Thank God they have a life and a job because we could talk for hours. Oh, we absolutely. Talk 24 hours. We could I mean, I can't wait to wear in Tampa. I can't wait to just us awesome. and you have no pets around you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Gotta go. I gotta go pick up Michelle and Chris. It's gonna be <laughs> awesome. Trump. Nobody else. Baby Trump. Baby Trump. And no, I, I love it. Phone ring. Hey, listen, I got a chameleon. Can you watch it for me? No. No. <laughs> These girls, every time I talk to them, I got this visual of like these animals, like in the jungle. <laughs> Just hanging off. Yep. <laughs> it's crazy. I was like, why don't you get into the, you know, the pet rock sitting business? Like you can make a million dollars. You ain't got to do nothing. You can leave them. You don't Love have it. to eat them. Yeah. That's the business you need to get into. The Here's the thing though. Uh, animals, one of the cool things about animals is that they don't talk back. We they don't, don't talk with smack. People. They just love you. They give you kisses. You feed them. You know, I don't have to deal with a boss. I don't have to go to like, I don't have, I don't have to wear a mask. Okay. For, you for, know? for the flexies out there watching on Chris's show, we, we own a pet sitting business. We take care of people's animals we take, when they leave town. They leave town and we take care of them. So we work I, all holidays, all I just left the visit. Where the sun was setting over a barn with three horses, it was, yeah, a great a nice Dane, visit. a, a, a St. Bernard, a blind cat who walks in circles, <laughs> just wants to be, I mean, it's like seriously, and all the love, it's a blind cat walks in circles <laughs> and she wants to be picked up. And here's the thing. These animals bring you so much love. They do. They do. You know what I mean? Like with people, they got issues. Yeah. Animals. Oh, yeah. And so I love taking care of animals. I love the job. The schedule's brutal brutal it's a brutal and it's your, this is your busiest time obviously because of vacation and, exactly and because of this thing that happened yeah. in 2020 and made yeah. it so that nobody would travel and shut our business down for six months and now people are like literally like horses in the at the like ready at the gate to just get out so now right. everybody's leaving for twice as long as well i kid you not and everybody got a puppy really everyone got puppies <laughs> so it's like extra it's so it's so crazy so yeah so we're working funny that you say that but that is so true because they get little puppies where they have children right mm -hmm. that's somebody they could play with or yeah. that that the you know the the husband or the wife or the or whoever they're just lonely yeah and they're at home yeah. right so they're working from home so like our business is kind of like a microcosm of and this is true we've always found this to be true the trends of what people do. So oh, I can yeah. tell you that people travel most in like May and June and then October. And September. Really? Well, mostly October. Yeah. October. It's so Why weird. October? I don't, I don't know. know. 
they just weird. Do. It's like after school starts and then people leave. Yeah. It's very strange. You think people are traveling like in the summer? March is busy for us because of spring break. That's yeah. true. Yeah. But like, but the microcosm is that people were at home. They were working from home. So they're like, hey, let's get some dogs, you know, and people didn't leave. Like seriously, for March, well, the end of March, so April, May, and June, our phone didn't ring. Crickets. No one oh. went anywhere. And can let's think about that for a second. Wow. America literally shut down. We I, 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 things are opening up different places, but we need to remember, like the I shop. Like we need to all, say never forget. Never, forget. never forget. <laughs> like we, nobody went. Like, do you remember? I don't know if you remember. Like, we would take walks at like ten o'clock, and people would they didn't have anywhere to go, and so it was like an eerie movie everyone went to bed like because there was nothing to do like town. yeah it was so quiet and you know what that was so peaceful it was really i missed that i missed that you know what time. else i miss somebody said this because when we got back from tampa you at, mean tulsa or tulsa sorry yeah when we got back from tulsa we decided we're not wearing uh the face diapers anymore and it was in with like about a week or two that um no, like everybody started to like not wear them. And then the CDC was like, ah, you don't have to wear them. Right. And so the funny thing is I heard, I saw somebody post, like, I'm kind of sad because I used to enjoy going into the store to see who oh, would have my great. back during the, the zombie, zombie apocalypse. apocalypse. Oh. Meaning that those yeah. of us that did go into the stores right. with our masks right. down below our chins, like a beard. Yeah. Um, have some backbone, baby. You would, you would take Leah, out a zombie. Here's the best part. Leah yeah, goes so into the store. I yeah. kid you not. Leah will find other people that are not wearing masks and she lit strangers from across the store and so she will go, she will go. And then they would bust out laughing. It was so fun. It was, it became a game. To I, clap. People. I would clap to somebody. I know. Da do a little was, dance. Would, like, yeah, yeah, you got, like here's the thing. I could identify. I don't care if you like 500 pounds overweight or whatever. The real men yes. were going without the masks. Mm -hmm. So I could see the pe the guys who had real testosterone were real yeah. men. Yes. And it was so good to see real men. I'd be okay, like, but that man. one? There weren't a lot of them. There okay. weren't a lot of them. There were not. There were not. But here's the thing now, now that we, uh, now that this, this mandate has been lifted, at least here in Ohio, I'm going into the stores and now I can, I can spot the, um, the beta males. Mm. They're still wearing them because they're still wearing the masks, and, and there's I no just, sign. And it's I'm just like program. It's just program. Oh like it's I program. get it if you're with your wife and she's like making you, but you're in the store by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just so. But look, I just read this in a in a book. One of my favorite uh, people in the entire world, and your viewers should look him up. John Taylor Gatto. He was New York Public School Teacher of the Year. But what he did was he learned how awful schooling is mm. and one of the, he he's just he's amazing one of the, one of his stories is that like there was this guy his name was like fat albert or something he was a young kid he he, and he, he was cool. his he was name was like cool. something like fat i know it was like fat something it she's really making it up. no no i have it in the book okay. upstairs i was it's just reading fat something so he was a teenager and he uh would only come to school like two days a month and john taylor gatto was like hey I don't want this guy to go to juvie for truancy. I'm going to try to work something out. So he asked, we said, so what do you do when you're not here in school? He goes, I have five aunts and uncles who started their own businesses before they were 20. And I go and I work for free and apprentice at the, at, at oh, each wow. one of their places oh. to learn their business. Cause I want to start my business. Cause I don't want to end up like you. He said that to John Taylor Gatto yeah. as a public school teacher sitting in a room, just, you know, ringing the bell, telling people what to do. So the one thing John Taylor Grotto says about schooling versus education is that schooling teaches you how to conform yeah. and how to obey to rules. follow the rules, yeah. stay in the box. Yeah. Right. So a lot of people be like, well, I went to public school and I didn't end up so bad or I didn't learn crazy things. The idea of schooling for the past 100 years is not necessarily to, to teach you bad things or to um, maybe not even, you know, to, to keep, to give you a horrible education, the idea is to teach you how to be, to conform. And we found out how effective it was with the mask mandate. Exactly. And with because the lockdown. People just did it. 100%. And, you know, we were also sold 
the narrative in school that knowledge is power. Well, yeah. yeah. But knowledge is not power. No. The one that applies the knowledge That's for has sure. the power. That's there good. you go. So the teachers and professors, yeah, they have the knowledge, but mm. they're not applying it. That's good. That's really good. That's why they're. That's why my Uber drivers. That's why my Lyft drivers are are professors. Wow. wow. Right. That's oh why they're gosh. doing network marketing because wow. they're professors. So so you told me knowledge is power. You have a doctrine and you have a master's. You have the power. No, you don't. Mm. Here we are, right? Look, I have a PhD, public high school diploma. <laughs> I love that. That's that. it. But I've applied that knowledge mm -hmm. that I've had yeah. to my life. Right. So that's you became divergent. See, you got, and that's what all that like Tulsa was about. Like that was 4,500 divergent people. Yes. Yep. People who like- we don't fit into their box. Like I would rather kids be homeschooled and not have to like be divergent, right? But like those people, most of them probably went to public school, but they, even the system could not brainwash them. them. Yeah. They oh. still bucked it. And you're one of those people. Right. I, bu I bucked the system my whole life and was called an asshole, a rebel, a troublemaker, a wise ass, because I, I bucked the system my whole right. life. Right, yeah. I never knew why, 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 why am I always, why am I against this? Why am I against going to church? Why am I against giving 25 cents to the church? I used to take the 25 cents that my parents gave me and we'd go get candy. I love it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And, I, and I couldn't, you know, you tell me go to confession, go tell a stranger what I did wrong that week. Why can't I just go to the head cheese and be like, you know what I did? I'm so sorry. Oh, that's right. I love that. That's right. But I got to go to a stranger that, you know, you know, might look at my little dairy air and offer me <gasps> a Snickers bar. You never know. Mm -hmm. We all know about that. Yeah. And, and, and listen, I'm going to tell you something about that. So priests and not all of them, they were, they were foxes in hen's houses. So yeah. Well, sure. Especially in, in Pennsylvania. Did, recently, within the past couple of years, we covered a giant takedown in Pennsylvania. They, of like all the dioceses in Pennsylvania. Listen, Super and here's the best up. thing. The families were bringing them in. I know. Father, come have dinner with us Sunday. Mm. Have spaghetti yeah. dinner with us. Yeah. When the priest is in there, he's like, oh, there's no, there's no father in this house. Oh, mm -hmm. oh okay. There's a battery. Okay. And they would go after the week. I know yeah. the week they they always pray on the week. Yeah, it, you know what I mean. And so, but we invited them in, right? Yeah, just like just like how we invite the, the same thing that we're doing now. Mm -hmm. We're inviting evil into our home, right? And, and people go, "Well, Chris, you're absolutely wrong." No, wearing a face diaper is a sacrificial ritual done in the occult. If you don't it is. Go watch the movie, Eyes Wide Shut, and come back to me and talk to me. Right. If you don't all have a mask on, then I'm, li I'm, if I'm lying, I'm dying. Okay? Yeah. And washing your hands. That is a ritual. That's what they That's do. so true. Wow. I never thought about that. that. Doctors do it all the time. Yeah. How many times do doctors do it? And they say, well, so I have clean hands and this and that. No, it's not. And then the last thing is six feet apart. Why six right. feet? That I had heard. Mm -hmm. So, so if, if you have a husband and a wife and a child, right? And you have three people in your household. Yeah. And you wear face diapers, all three of you. How many satanic rituals has your family alone performed in one day? And then 666. Right. Yeah. Six, six, six. Why wouldn't it? Why not five? Why not seven? Why not? Why not? So your family, it's not even like they have to have the witches and the demons, yeah. which they do. Okay. In the Illuminati, but they're having us do it. Right. They're having 
ordinary people, average Joe Schmo, right. perform the satanic rituals. And then we're going, why did it wow. just happen? Wow. And that is why it felt so freeing in Tulsa because, and that is why I think it had to be there at Rama Bible Training Center because of the power of God, because you can't, when you recognize it, it is a satanic thing. There's nothing that can combat it, but God. You can only hit it with the blood of Jesus, with the power of God, with the anointing, with the Holy yeah. Spirit. And then the fear triumphs into faith because the satanic rituals and all that stuff, they don't have, they only have power when we let them have power. Yeah. We can immediately take it back. Exactly. And, and we will, and we are, but it took this kind of controlling mechanism to wake up the church and say, this stuff has been happening for mm. the past 100 years, especially in the past 50 years. All of this control, all of this brainwashing, all this mind games, all this manipulation happens in the public school. It happens in the media. It happens in Hollywood. And we had to have it face to face right there, you know, and, and the people that could see woke up. Yeah. You know? And people are still waking up every day. And you have your blind cats that are just keep going around in a circle. That's what it is, baby. I know. That's what it is. That's Where's what it is. Right your eyes are open. You're like, like an iron ball there. there. No, no that's a scripture. They have yeah. eyes, but they see not. Yeah, they so have true. ears, but they don't hear. Mm -hmm. but, and, and, you know, in the scripture, it says about them falling away. Right? Yeah. Rapture, right? Or, right. Uh, rapture, revelations. That they fall away. Right. Right. For what they not do for they not know what they've done. Right. I thought falling away was them denying Christ. No, falling away is your Christians doing the poke getting the pokey jokey. Yeah. Christians wearing like that. peace diapers. The That's church. falling away from Christ because Christ drew a line. Yeah. That's really good. Listen. Look, I had a guy call me. I'm gonna call him out right now. He goes, oh, I'm a man of God, la, 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 la. Oh, okay. He goes, I have a message for you. I said, oh, great. Can't wait to hear. It. What is it? He said, I want to tell you that I, God told me to tell you not to take the vaccine and that 350 million people are going to die. I said, that's great, Janiel. I said, I've been prophesizing that two years ago. You're two years late. So I don't know what God you're listening to, brother. But he's definitely not on my time because I talked about it two years ago. And we have the false prophets. We have people that are telling you, I'm a prophet. Mm -hmm. You're, if you were a prophet, you wouldn't have known. I mean, do you think that I get the pokey jokey? I've talked about it all the time. I've gotten censored. I've gotten taken off, right? right. So if you were a man of God and God was truly talking to you, that is not a message God would be talking to you about, right? right. Would be right. About, Here, I didn't tell you girls this. This is crazy. So I'm at Scott McKay's sister's house. Okay. My, my new family. Aww. Now I walk in, they're like, baby, draw, baby, draw, right? And I'm hugging them. And so we're eating. And I mean, they just couldn't have been, it couldn't have been sweeter. They couldn't have been with more love and affection. And this guy is looking at me and he comes walking up and he says, hi, my name is Luke. He said, you know, I just want to let you know, I have a message from God. I'm not calling you out. And he goes, I didn't really know who you are until an hour ago. Oh, wow. And I said, okay, now, this yeah. is going to be interesting. And he says, I am to ask you what birth name your mother gave you. Huh. I was like, Wow. Okay. And there's reason behind it. Okay. The last name is Steinbrunn, which is German, which means brown stone. Okay. My family were Masons. Nice. Okay. okay. So I don't know if you know about the Mason curse through generations, but mm. there's a Mason curse that goes through generations, generations. Okay. I never understood why I hated my last name. I hated it. I got beat up because of it. Stink bomb, Steinberger, the whole nine. No months. way. Oh, you have no idea. I was so fast. I was faster than any black person in my city. Like I, I could blow by any black dude. It didn't even matter. 
because I had to run for my life. See, it's different when you're just running athletically in a race and it's different when you run for your life. Yeah. And so I couldn't defend myself. So I had to, you know, run for my life. And the, and the teachers would give me five to a 10 minute head start. So they would say, they would dismiss me first. No way. And let me go. And I would be off. And it was like, I had to run for my life. The teachers and knew that's how much you were picked on. Yes. They all, they, they knew. And so at 22, where's your mom? This one's for you, mom. I became a Chippendale. And when I became a Chippendale, they said, we can't have Chris Stein, but like it doesn't, it doesn't okay. sound right over the mic, right? You gotta have a stage name. Okay. And so they said, you look like John Eric's Hexum, E-R-I-K. And I said, oh, I don't, I don't like that. I said, how about this? How about E-R-Y-X? Made up a last name. Oh my never gosh. Heard of it. No way. Two months ago, if you look it up right now, two months ago, this woman comes up to me, a prophet in DC, and says, I know what your last name means. And I said, What does it mean? And she goes, You are a light heat guided missile that could take out a tank like wow. from the shoulder. And she said, Do you have, do you know that God calls his prophets by weapon names? And I said, Yeah, I heard of that. And she goes, you're, that's you. Oh, you're wow. Amazing. So how crazy that this man had this bizarre question. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. he wanted to know who I was. Wow. And wow. so it, the, instead of God saying, hey, you know, you're going to meet the missile, you're going to meet a God... It was like, no, you go to this guy and you ask him. So for you, did you start like lifting weights? Because you don't just become a Chippendale. You start lifting weights. Did you start lifting weights to fend off? Like because you were beat up, you were just like, that's it. I'm never going to beat up, be beat up again. So my story is that um, I was so puny and so, so, so fragile um, they, there'd be three people that two would hold me and one would, you know, beat me up. Usually it was the younger brother. Usually the older brother would hold me. Um, my dad would come to school with a baseball bat, you know, Gosh. things like things like that. Wow. It wasn't so much for me to defend myself from the kids that were beating me up. It was defend myself against my father. Oh, oh wow. Gosh. And so I had a, I, I, I could handle the, the kids beat me up, but when I came home, the, the, the physical abuse from my father, I couldn't take. So your parents married? Did they, yeah. like, they, did they ever separated? My mom put her head in the sand like wow. an eye. Is he still alive? No, neither one of them are. No. Oh my gosh. How old were you when they passed away? Uh, three years ago. I lost oh, wow. months of Did you stay in touch? Did he ever have any redemptive moments or was it just like, that's it, we're done? And So he told me at, when I was 21 that he was sorry for everything that he'd ever done. Wow. And, um, he, 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 he explained to me a little bit what was going on with him. My dad was a professional drummer, played with Johnny Cash, Eddie Rabbit, Johnny Paycheck, was always on the road. Wow. And he was married and he had another family. Oh, wow. Came home one night and his wife left with his children. So there was so much rage and angst in, in my dad that I was the firstborn and, and I was to have that taken out. That's, that's his story to me. Mm -hmm. um, I have a different version now that I've always had. And um, we'll, we'll talk about that off air. But um, so, yeah, I wanted to protect myself against my dad. That's wow. Crazy. And so I started playing basketball and this guy's like, Hey, he, I walked in, it was a PAL. He's like, um, you know, you, you want to learn how to box? And I was like, what's boxing? I didn't even know. What <laughs> and he's like, Oh, he's like, you could defend yourself. And I was like, okay. Yeah. I heard about defending myself. It clicked. Mm. And so I, I, I just, so what I would do is instead of going playing basketball, I went and boxed. My parents never knew. 
Oh because my gosh. They were at my games. So they never knew. So oh. I would box and they, they would never know. And then when it came time when I became a Golden Glove boxer, um, you know, I think it was 15, you know, they were like, what, where'd this come from? You know? When and you were 15, you became a Golden Glove boxer? Wow. How long did you box for? Um, I just a couple of months, like one year, you know what I mean? Like seriously, because it took so much out of me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I got into modeling like overnight. Like I, like I was so ugly. Like I got hit with a fugly stick. Like, like something happened to me from a child to teenager. And then at 16, I, I was a model. And wow. it was crazy. It was like girls, you know, girls didn't want to have anything to do with me. They would make fun of me. And then at 16, I became a model. And now here I am in Manhattan and, you know, doing runway and, you know, magazine and stuff like that, print. And then that's when I started working out a little bit seriously. Uh, one of my um, contracts was with, um, oh my gosh, the one in Philadelphia. We were just talking about it the other day. I can't even remember. But I... I, I built my back up so wide, not realizing what I was doing. Mm-hmm. You have to be a 42 regular. And I went to a 44. Wow. And I was like, I can't model anymore because they wanted you, you know what right. I mean? After six, that's it, after six. Okay. And so you had to be slender. So I wasn't. So I was like, what was I going to do? And I was like, I got to get into bodybuilding. So then that's when I got into bodybuilding. Wow. Oh my gosh. What a story. Yes. But along the way, then, since we're doing this whole like life journey with you, like at what point, cause this is traumatic, right? So you have this incredibly traumatic childhood. You're getting beat up at school. You're having to run. You're going home to like a dysfunctional family. Your dad's on the road. He, when he is home, he's not an, a loving, kind, nurturing person like he should be. And they're sending you to church and you're like this, there's no love here. They're giving you the quarter, you, you know, all these different things. And yet God has his hand on you. Yeah. Until yeah. what, on uh, what moment do you, do you finally realize, whoa, I, okay. And you meet God. So looking back now, it was when I slit my wrist. So my parents bought a brand new home and I moved in with them. And I just remember playing a song, it was Bon Jovi, Never Say Goodbye. And mm. I just was like, that's it, I'm done. Mm. I had it and I walked in the bathroom, I slit my wrist, I was in a coma for three weeks. Oh my gosh. And it was then after I got out of the coma that I realized that God did not want me to die. Wow. I should have been dead right wow. then. And How old were you? Was it what, what point in your journey was this? I was, I was 17. Oh my gosh. I was 17. And then that's when I obviously like my dad came. Um, <clears throat> Cause he wasn't allowed. They would not let him near me. And then finally, when I came out of the coma um, and I'll tell you how I knew God was real. Now that I look back, there was an, uh, there was a mature man, very, very old, very, um, very obtuse, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Uh, Had a cane, walked around with the cane. And as I was laying in my bed every day, he would walk by my room and bang on my door and be like, hey, you got to get up. Hey, you're you're too young. You have no life ahead of you. Wow. You You have so much to offer the world. I did not know this, but he did it every single solitary day. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Like while you were in the coma, get out. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know who he was. Um, And then after, you know, I got to meet him and stuff. And then I was out and um, I hugged him and never saw him ever again. My dad came. No way. Yeah. It was almost like. um, An angel. (laughs) That's what it sounds like. It sounds like one of those movies. It like, he, he just, (laughs) it was like. He vanished. Yeah. Like he, he was, he was gone. And so yeah. I went and lived on my own and became a model and a dancer and, you know, took three years of jazz, two years of ballet, and then became a Chippendale, 
Does your mom know what a chip and nail is? So we, before we went live, we were telling Chris this story. So if you guys are watching and you're one of Chris's viewers, last night you did a show that was pretty emotional. I wasn't watching it and neither was Leah, but my mom was in the chat. And, uh, and you were saying how Scott's family was so like non-judgmental that they even accepted you, even though you had this past as a Chippendale. And, um, and so my mom calls me in, or maybe I was saying goodnight to her or something like that. And she's giggling. And she's, first of all, she's telling me how great your show was and how beautiful it was to see you so raw and emotional. And then she said that, and then that's when she started giggling. And, um, she said, so I didn't know what a Chippendale was. I didn't know what a Chippendale was. So I Googled, was, so I Googled it. <laughs> And she could not stop laughing all night long. She's like 62. She was giggling. Doesn't know, never heard of one. And I was like, oh I, I'm gosh. envisioning my mom Googling that. Yeah. And I couldn't stop laughing. Yes. Oh my gosh. I was laughing so So for hard. Chip and Chip and Dale, for those of you who don't know, they were part of the um the 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 what's that? Remember the uh du the the duck. Oh, oh, the little cartoon. The, the little, little cartoon, cartoons. Chip and Dale, the chipmunk. That's what I always think of. That's what I think of when I think of it. But no, I don't think he wasn't the chipmunk type. No, I was not a chipmunk. No. And so okay. for everybody watching, you know, I just want to say if I had a daughter, you two would be the epitome and the role model of what Aww. it is. That's so nice. That is the highest praise ever. Thank you. Because that is so sweet. It's so it's so hard. We can be Chip and Dale. Yeah. <laughs> now, how are you going to be Chipettes? Chip we can Chipettes. be the Chipettes. Please, yeah. you so still wait. Me? Wait. So, Leah, I want to know. Say my last name yet? Eric. Eric. Steinberger. No. no. Eric. Eric. So in. wait, what's which one's like on your license though? It's going to be Eric's. Eric's. Okay. Okay. So at what point, like, okay, so you have to, I see how your journey has progressed. Okay. This is this, you don't start off as like, Hey, I'm going to be a male stripper. Um, you, your journey <laughs> progresses. <laughs> God, God has got his hand on your life at 17, but you still are going down a different path, which very similar to Mike Lindell's story. Yes. Where he knew that God, he was going around doing crack cocaine, telling everybody that right. God, God had a plan for his, his life, life yeah. until right. one day, right. until one day, the, the dealers all made a deal and said, nobody in the city is going to, in Minnesota, going to sell you crack anymore. You got to get your life right with God. And this was fairly recently for this guy. I don't know how old he is, but this was like in 2015, 2016. Yeah. When did you go from meeting God to knowing Jesus mm. and becoming flex the truth, flexing your mind, flexing your body, flexing your spirit. We, um, that is a great question. So been saved, gave my life to Christ 17 years ago. Um, I would say that question, and this might blow people's minds away, but how I remember it, how I recall, um, I would say three years ago, I lost my mom and dad seven months in between one another. Wow. totally blew me away um ended up in landmarks really had to, and that's when i had to deal with my childhood most people don't deal with their childhood i never did they do not and they and need to so i did and then once i did i everything tasted better music wow. sounded better wow. um, when i drank water I, it tasted wow moment and i'll tell you i was in disney world with a with my mentor and i was with his family and i was with his son and i was in awe now let me explain this this is going to knock the socks off some people even as a christian for 13 14 years saved mm -hmm. whenever i was in a place a party no matter how great it was i always found what was wrong with it I oh, wow. found the negative. Mm. And so even though I have a positive personality, I would always say, yeah, but this, uh, but look at that. Right. Oh. And I never talked about the good. Wow. I talked about the bad. And then, so when I was in Disney, I just remember it was like I had my childhood back. 
And I, I got more excited seeing Mickey Mouse than I think my mentor son did. Like I ran up and I was hugging them and I think they were scared. I ain't gonna lie. Like, <laughs> like, like hey, I <laughs> need security here, you know? And, um, but I, I enjoyed, like I remember going into Haunted House and Nightmare Before Christmas, my favorite movie. And that was the uh, theme. And I was like, oh, like everything, like if I saw a light lit up, I'd be like, oh my God. Like, it was like, I'd never experienced light before. Wow. That's amazing. Wow. So <laughs> that was the first. Okay. When I recognized Jesus Christ was about a year ago. You're oh, kidding. Wow. I, I was in church and the song came on. I'm a child, but I am, I am a child of God. Mm -hmm. I had my my hand raised and I just snot all. And at that time I was thinking, you know what? I'm stupid. What have I what have I been doing my whole life for running away from this person? This is the only person that has never swung at me, has never called me a name, has never put me down. Wow. When my when my building was burning. He was the one running in when everybody was running away from me. Yeah. The person that has never, ever, ever said an ugly word to me. Every time that I had my heart broken, he was there. Every time I wanted to die, he wanted me to live. And I couldn't, I couldn't for me and for my past and my childhood and everything I went through, I it was so hard for me to accept that somebody truly loved me that much. Wow. wow. That's amazing. Wow. You're going to call in the ambulance. Somebody, somebody's crying right now. <laughs> oh, somebody's yeah, crying right, right now. Oh, oh it's so good. Crazy. You know what? You were my phase. You were, we were supposed to have fun. No crying. <laughs> No, but this is fun. This is Here's amazing. The because, I, I like think, the funnest wait. thing in the world though, honestly yeah like what you just told everybody in like i don't know 35 minutes or whatever is i was dead and god i rose again yeah by the power of god and the good news is you can have it too right if you're listening right now then you can have it too that chris is called and if you're listening then you're called but your story, that whole thing, like you were talking about, somebody wants to help write a book. Your life is a book. It is a redemptive story. And I think that as Christians who grew up as Christians, the one, one of the things we miss is the hand of God on people's lives Yeah. until they reach the one moment mm -hmm. when they accept Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. The word of God says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anybody hears my voice and opens the door, I'm going to come and we're going to lay a table. Me and my dad, we're going to come and we're going to eat with you. And so your whole life, somebody was knocking, mm -hmm. somebody was knocking, somebody That's was knocking. Incredible. And you finally open that door. That is the most yeah. exciting, the most joyous, the most amazing. Well, and you guys need to understand yeah. that we just met Chris a month ago. Mm -hmm. And so... This is what we would be talking about if we were on the phone with Chris. Right. And so now it's just live for everybody You're else to this see. conversation. Yeah. Um, and you we just to, would want to know, like, Chris, what, you this know, is, what is your this story? This is a testimony to whom, you know, much is forgiven. Then your heart is so much bigger. And as yeah. you're talking to, and one of the amazing parts about your story is that God was bringing you healing before you actually recognize that it was Jesus. Mm, that's so good. God loves us and he's always calling us. And that, that story, tell, tell people about going back into your childhood. What was that like to bring healing to, to those moments? What did you do? How, how would somebody else go through the process of, a, of bringing healing to a traumatized childhood? Michelle was listening to Dr. Um, Mark Sherwood. He was at Mark the conference. Sherwood was at the conference. He was pa uh, Pastor Craig Hagren's doctor, helping him lose weight and get his life, you know, back on track. And he had a woman on, and she was talking about healing your past. 
and heal your memory. She said, you have to go back and heal it because you don't understand that it'll make you ill. It will. It, no. it, it made me ill. It made me not mentally ill. I don't want to say that, but yeah. the rage. I mean, yes. listen, listen, I don't think there was an, I don't think there was a time there wasn't a man on the planet that had warm rage. Like wow. if I yelled at you, I've watched the biggest, I've watched men just literally freeze because of my tongue. What does wow. it say in the Bible? Your tongue is life, life and death. death. Right, exactly. And so you could slice somebody's jugular with your tongue, right? Absolutely. As a, and so my rage was where I would pop a blood vessel in my eye where I would scream so loud mm. at a human being my vocal cords would be damaged for three days, a week, two weeks, mm -hmm. where it was hoarse. And the, but it was the rage that I had my whole entire life. That yeah. your dad had. Yeah, right. And the, well, and again, that's why I bring up that last name. Mm -hmm. The curse. In the Masonic curse, right? That's all evil. The rage, the, I mean, I, at the age of 13, I picked up a bureau. You know what a bureau is like a cabinet? Yeah. yeah. Drawers, drawers in it and all. D R A W E R S. Drawers, drawers. I get it. Drawers. 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 Right? Drawers. Drawers. And, and drawers. 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 And drawers. And so I picked it up. You <laughs> can't stand you, girl. So I picked <laughs> it up and I flung it down the stairs. Oh my gosh. Because the, um, the amount of uh, strength that I had from, from that rage, you know, yeah. people told me, you know, it, it almost like Hulk, like yeah. where, where, you know, where I break things. And, and that's what I did because I didn't know any other way. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe it was a curse. That's why when he asked me that and, and all the research that I've done for three years, you know, on Masons and the Knights of Templar and, and Illuminati and, you know, all of these evil societies mm -hmm. um, and watch what's going on. I just talked to my niece and how about this? My niece is a Mason. Her mother is a Rothschild. No way. Get out. How crazy is that? Ah! That's cr that's insane. Wow. But if you met her, like you girls, the sweetest girl on the planet. Oh, wow. Sweetest girl on the planet. But you know what? She's anointed to. She mm. can see auras and she's got hit by demons. And coincidentally enough, she said, uh, Uncle Bling, that's what she calls me, Uncle Bling. Uh, she's 19 now. She's like, um, when I was 11 years old, she's like, uh, I used to look up the Illuminati. I said, what? And then she's like, oh yeah. She's like, I would lay there and my, my legs would get like hot, like burning on fire. And she's like, I could sit up and I could see she's like, but I couldn't move. She was wow. powerful. Here she is telling me this. And I'm like, wow, that's how this all started for me. Wake mm. up and look up the Illuminati. Wow. Isn't that crazy? So that is crazy. God uses you. I want to hear your testimony on that. It's nowhere. It, it, it's not, it's not like yours. Uh, it's, no, but, it's but it is really powerful. Um, our, our testimony starts with our mom really. Essentially we were talking to you about her. She got saved when she was 17 or 18. She always says she got saved as a little child and she did, but then she found Jesus um, again as, as a, in her late teens and uh, she changed her life. Well, I would say she met up my dad and my dad was kind of a philanderer and mm -hmm. she gets pregnant out of wedlock and he wants to get an abortion. That's me. So my mom was like, no, I'm not killing this child. And that's why I know that abortion is wrong is because a lot of people are like, well, a woman can't just, just have a child. No, you can't kill people. I am living proof. You can't kill yeah. people. Right. Don't you kill don't people. Fucking miracle. Yeah. No, seriously. And I know. And I, my mom, um, 
people, I don't know how some people react differently when I say this, but it's just the truth. She literally in her brokenness, she said, she told my dad, she said, you have to marry me or I will kill myself. I'm keeping this child and you have to marry me. And so he did. Um, and then, and, but he was extremely abusive. He was an alcoholic and physically abusive. And um, we have a half brother that's older than us my, from my dad's first marriage. And he was very abusive to, to my, my older brother. And Aww. my parents stayed married for seven years. And in the middle of that seven years, I was born. Um, and when my mom got pregnant, I think dad had, had even said, well, get an abortion for this one. I don't want another child. Um, but I don't think he was as serious as he was um, with you. But um, finally, at my, my dad had um, hit my mom and thrown her up against the wall and, and ruined all of these collectibles that she had. And, and she just walked away. She, she brought, she brought all of her life savings to this marriage. My dad was, he, we, he would always throw these big parties, um, raging parties. He would spend all of their paychecks, um, on these to, to, to you know, buying steaks for people. And my mom, it, she's got two kids and then, you know, uh, 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 um, what do you call that? A stepson. A stepson to take, to take care of. And, and here my dad is just blowing all of this money. And, um, and so she got a divorce and our, and our childhood was really, difficult. It switched because my grandfather, he came over from Sweden. My dad's, my dad. dad's dad. He came over from Sweden. He's very, he was very intelligent man. Very smart. He's a genius. He uh, created the zip tie on ice cream. The box, you know those old fashioned boxes of ice cream when you, you pull zip the little zip. That was his invention. He invented really? that zip. He invented the, uh, like at Taco Bell, the sour cream squirter. He invented yeah. that. And the box top on cigarettes. He invented that. And the, and the container to keep pizzas hot when they deliver. Yeah. Really? And he, he worked for a company, a box company. And they, when you work for a company, they own all your, ideas. your proprietary ideas. So he went and started his own company. And I will say that he had what you could call the American dream, but he came here to be a farmer. And I kind of feel bad for him, um, even though he was kind of a... Um, Hard not a man. great person. Um, but his dad left him. He couldn't handle being here in America. And so he left his wife and two kids and, um, my grandfather being the genius that he was, um, even though he was a hard man, he didn't make it as a farmer. And he eventually built these two giant businesses. Um, and his kids all joined the business and we call them the Swedish mafia. Kind of <laughs> um, but no, like Swedish. he built, he, he ended up building the largest house in our, in county. our county, like, and Whoa. people would be like, oh, you live, you know, but, but when our parents divorced, my, he, my grandfather had had an affair and he married another woman and that woman adopted or took my, my, my half brother. And so they kind of have him and my half brother. And she starts to, when I have to go visit my dad on the weekends, she starts to, you know, say, well, your mom's brainwashed my brother so that when I would see him, your mom's white trash. Yeah. And so after, we went from being the hoity toity and treated really special because our family had lots of money to then, as soon as our parents get divorced, then we're just, the and white we stopped, trash that, and like, we stopped getting like our grandparents, like turn their backs on us. Yeah. Like we yeah. had weekends with our grandparents and they never had us over again, like yeah. as their grandkids. Yeah. And so we, we move in with my grandma who I love, but she's on since passed away side. on my mom's side, but she was a hard woman. She smoked, she cussed, she drank and we moved in here and it was really hard. Uh, this is the house that we live in actually. Lee and I uh, own we, it now, but 25. Oh geez. I'm so old. 30 years ago. A while ago. Over yeah. We, and ago. so we couldn't handle living here. So we, we popped all over the place and we end up, we end up in government housing and it's really funny because we live in kind of a suburb. So it's kind of not the real hood, but it was the hood. It was the hood as, as hood as it gets. And so here. we get there and we had moved from suburbia to the yeah, regular neighborhood to the, to the hood. And we didn't know anything about racism. Every, every, every kid was just a kid. And the first racism that we ever experienced was against us. So we go out on the playgrounds and these black girls would come up and be like, you can't swing here. You're white. What do you mean? I'm, what do you mean? And like, they would be outside playing double Dutch like this, you know, and we'd want to play. And they're like, you can't jump with us. You're white. Right. And this went on for like a long time until where Michelle and I, we wore them down with kindness. So we're like, no, you need an extra person to run these ropes. <laughs> we're going to play with you. Okay. We're going to do this. And like, oh, the white girls are here again. Right. <laughs> um, 
And well, at one time, Michelle got beat up on the bus. I mean, it was a crazy, crazy I was like childhood. Six. I got beat up on the bus as a six year old. Our bus driver, the bus was so out of control that the bus driver just embraced it. And she would play like MC Hammer and like yeah. loudly. And little so- tapes. Remember tapes? Our bus was the only bus in our district that showed, it was like, you could have made a movie about it. We showed up and we were the ones where no one sat. You didn't sit on the bus. They're playing like too Too legit, legit. too legit legit to quit. And everybody's hanging out the window. baby. And we had the same songs over and over again because it was just a tape, right? (laughs) So nobody sat and it would be funny. But we came from that place. Like yes. that was the, we were those, those kids, like all the black kids, that's where they all lived. And it was just, it was an interesting childhood. And for us, for me to explain to people, like the only racism goes all directions. Yes. Okay. People will beat you up. I mean, it's crazy, but I always knew my mom was a Christian, even though she had, she struggled and we lived in government housing. She, had, she would work many jobs at one time. We had, you know, and it was embarrassing for her. Sometimes we'd be on food stamps. Sometimes we had to get, you know, food from the church. And sometimes, you know, it, she worked so hard. Like we would pull through the drive through and we would get French fries and a burger. And my mom wouldn't get from the anything. dollar menu. And she said she wasn't hungry. She I didn't say I'm later. not hungry. I didn't know later. She just, she was hungry. She just did that. And it's so funny because we've told people the story later on in life. Like, I didn't know you grew up poor. And what, what the people that knew us then the, (laughs) yeah, the, the irony and the horribleness of this is that our, our family on both Both sides sides are is incredibly wealthy. My, uh, my uncle and my mom's brother started Procter and Gamble in Russia. Yeah. He was, he he was was that high up. Okay. We went to Russia when I was in like ninth grade because he married his interpreter. Okay. We we were surrounded by money. Surrounded by wealth dripping. And and as an adult, I think to myself, I have like cousins who are like my brothers who have kids now. And I look at them and I'm like, if they're so poor that they can't have food and I have so much money, why don't like, what was wrong with my aunts and uncles? Cause I had each, each side had five kids. What was wrong with my aunts and uncles? What was wrong with my grandparents? I'll tell you what it was. It was was could not help it us. was satanic but also so many people would look at my mom and say well she divorced my dad's name was mm-hmm. brad she divorced brad this is her bed this is her bed she has to line it so the kids yeah. have to suffer because she divorced this great guy this great abusive man okay you know alcoholic i was terrified i took my dad to court when i was in third grade because i didn't want to see him anymore because he was an alcoholic and he scared me and um and he would say horrible mean things and i gained weight as a result and so my dad would say horrible, mean things. My brother would say horrible, mean things. And I don't blame my brother. My brother, uh, we, children are impressionable. Ch- They'll yeah, say but, what they, they will say. And that's how we know now, looking back on it, what our brother was being told. And you talk about generational curses. I don't know if it's necessarily a generational curse, but somebody has to stop the abuse. Because right. my dad was abused by his dad. His dad was abused by his dad. Yeah. You know, and somebody has to stop it and say no. And our mom did that, honestly. Yeah. So our mom, mom is like a walking abuse. saint. Yeah. And that's, oh, yeah. that is not, she exactly. never yelled at us. She never raised her voice one time. Oh. Now, that doesn't mean that we didn't get disciplined, but she yeah. didn't even do it. She wasn't the kind of, she like, didn't get, she didn't angry get angry at us. Yeah. But she, she didn't would allow get the anger to come out of us. And yeah. then she was just very like, this is not, no. You know, because I was the wild one and Leah was the one that all but you she had to always do was look kept at her us wrong in church. So we were, we were constantly going to church. If the church was open, we, we were there. We only played like if the TV was on, we played like TBN. And um, so I'll fast forward a little bit to our, our big change in life. Like we knew Jesus, but when I was in high school, um, I was watching Benny Hinn, this miracle working guy or whatever. And he talked about the Holy Spirit, knowing the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit. And I read this book called Good Morning, Holy Spirit, which I highly recommend everybody read. And I started to say, good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Holy Spirit. And um, God gave me a vision of, I don't know if I'll ever go to Africa, but since then he's kind of fulfilled it, of preaching the gospel to certain countries in Africa. And so at that moment, I feel still the Holy Spirit. I began to speak in tongues and my whole life changed. Mm. See, in the, in, in the, in the Bible, Peter says to Jesus, I will follow you to the end of the world. And Jesus says, Peter, right before he he gets crucified, he says, before the rooster crows two times, you will deny me three times. And he does, but, but 
he's redeemed. And on the day of Pentecost, which we just had this weekend, it was a um, Sunday. Yeah. They, he said, wait until you are endued with power from on high. You'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's what Joel prophesied. Your sons and, and daughters will see visions. Your old men will see dreams. Um, and tongues of fire fell on them. And they all began to speak in other tongues. And Peter got up. And he witnessed and he told the gospel. He went from hiding to being bold. Yeah. And two, I think 3,000 people got saved that day. From that moment, exactly. they had miracle working power. And that was that became my thing. Like I wanted to get everybody filled with the Holy Spirit. So as a teenager, I would go to youth group and one, I had two different youth groups. One wouldn't allow the gifts of the spirit and the others would. And so the ones that allowed the gifts of the spirit, I would get up as a teenager and I'd lead services and I'd be praying for kids and kids would be slain in the spirit. And I get prophecies and words and miracles and everything would flow. And then God told me to go to Rama, but he also told me this. He said, you're going to hit a ceiling if you just focus on the gifts of the spirit. You've got to have the wisdom and the knowledge yeah, and, really and the life experience to back it up. And so we, I went to Rama and my mom, that's now for those that don't know, Rama is the school that the health and freedom conference just took place at. So when we found out that this conference was being hosted at Leah's alma mater, and I hadn't been back and we hadn't like been back there in years. 20 years, yeah. we we're like, we're there. We yeah. have to go. Of so have to go. I go and I learned a lot and I learned how things not to do as a minister and things to do as a minister. And my mom feels led to move out. And that was a miracle. Um, that was huge because I was 15, I think. At and the Michelle, time. Michelle at the time was a gymnast and she taught gymnastics. She was at the at, at a gymnastics gymnasium five days a week wow. and she was on a competition team. And um, it was a huge thing for her to leave. It was. I left my whole life and God literally spoke to me because I was, I was torn. I was going to move in with my dad, who, you know, the great guy. Right. I was like, mom, if you're going with Leah, I'm staying here. Um, and finally God spoke to me and, um, and he said, cause I said, God, I'm too young. I shouldn't have to make this kind of decision. And he had me open up my Bible to Jeremiah. And it says, say not, I am only a child. And yeah. instantly in that moment, that's when God and I became like, we just, we, we were one at that yeah. moment. Like I was always saved, but it was like, now I go to the father, I commune with him. He answers my questions. He talks with me. And so, so my mom and I yeah. packed up, Lee was already at Rama for a month, I think. Yeah, three months. Um, and my mom and I packed up a U-Haul from our apartment uh, building. And my mom is kind of a small lady, but she's always been really strong. So we moved furniture and I'm 15 and we're just packing this thing. And we drive out to Oklahoma and we lived there for, for four, four and, and a half years. years. And oh. while we were there, so talking about healing. So that's what piqued my interest with you and going through healing. So um, with my mom, she had an abusive childhood. She has an abusive past. And so we know a lot about abuse. Um, like post-traumatic stress disorder and abuse, which is what you obviously have suffered from because that's so traumatic of a childhood. Right. And if you, if you don't heal the past, it will come with you like a weight mm -hmm. in everything. And so we had an abusive childhood. And so while we were in Tulsa, which is kind of the buckle of the Bible belt, God poured out his spirit on us and we just set back from life yeah. and we began to heal Yeah. and we began to work through our childhood and work through things. And God, I can tell you guys right now that God is the great redeemer and he can take everything in your yes. past and make it like it should have been. You yes. don't have to redo it. He redoes it. And he makes it so that like whatever was totally horrible and awful, he can flip it so that you can use that against the devil because that's what Chris Eriks is doing right now. Okay. So he has this horrible childhood. He does crazy things. He's this model. He does this, and God has this personality that he's building up inside of him. And so all these different things that, you know, you shouldn't have had to go through. God has taken repackaged and been like, well, this is the personality that I've wanted you to be. And you still have a journey to keep going through. There's still healing. There's still, there's still a lot yeah. of stuff, but as you do, you can bring other people with you with this right. testimony and this healing right. that you've had. And that is the greatest thing. That's Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted, mm -hmm. right? And if there's one thing with the gospel, it's to tell people, I don't care how old you are. I don't care how young you are. Yeah. God can fix this. Amen. God can fix this. And he's going to take it. So what the devil intended for evil, mm -hmm. he's going to turn around for good. Amen. So all this stuff, whether you're stripping for the Chippendales or whether you're, you know, being beat up by your dad, 
the devil does horrible things and we're not going to excuse them, but we're going to say, look what you did now, 10 times more, I'm going to come at you. Amen. Okay. Amen. So we're going to go after abusive parents, or we're going to go after right. sex trafficking, or we're going to go after abusive, you know, Catholic priests or whatever. And we're going to take you down because what you try to come at me with, you opened a door. You now I'm rue, coming we, I always you. tell the devil, you will rue the day. You will right. rue the day. So we took it after that. Um, oh, geez, go ahead. We Keep took going. a 3000 mile bicycle trip. My mom, Leah and I, this was in 2003, we sold everything that we owned. We were in Tulsa and we bicycled and kind of used Leah's ministry degree um, and put it to use. And we just started, you know, going around the country and people, we never brought up God once and people always, they would get around. You us say that would, kind of like, it's a, like, it's a normal thing. We took a 3000 mile bicycle trip. We started in Tulsa. Right. We, we, it's we, normal. It's we a bicycled to Cincinnati. We got all the gear, all the special gear. The we like years. had saddlebags on our, on our bikes and we carried our tent and our pots and pans. And, and we bicycled to Washington DC and then down to Fort Myers, Florida. And it was mom's idea. It was our mom's idea. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a missionary trip and it was God. We sold everything that we owned. We had this yard sale for like two or three months in our apartment, in our apartment People and to buy, buy the special all of our gear. Stuff. We sold our car. We didn't know what we were going to do. We were done. Um, and this, that the bicycle trip is a whole mission, mission thing. So then we end up own. back here in um, Ohio and my uncle who we uh, take care of even now was taking care of my grandmother at the time who owned this house that goes back to our childhood, right? When my parents got divorced, this is where my mom moved us into. And, um, and we thought, well, we need to stay here and take care of my, my grandma and my uncle because he had had a stroke and, um, so we stay here and, uh, at the time my uncle, he smokes and he drinks and he works up at the pub. He's an alcoholic. He'd been an alcoholic since he was 13 years old. And people would wonder, you know, why do you give him a ride? His little job was up at the pub. He, his whole, his life was messed up by his brothers and sisters, the same one that messed up my mom. And he was a mechanic. He was really smart. He's a genius, but his life took a turn for the worst. And he just, he, his body broke down. He was having seizures all the time. And he was a crippled, like, like shell of but a dude. God told us, and this is part of our story. God spoke. So our grandma, we took care of our grandma and our uncle for, for five years. And then my grandmother passed away yeah. in 2008. And then my uncle's story kind of starts to evolve from there. And, and the whole time that we're here, we would give him rides up to the pub and we'd have Christian people like, well, why do you even support that? And we're like, we're not supporting it. I don't want him to end up in a ditch. And, um, and we would buy his alcohol. Well, why are you buying his alcohol? Well, because if he doesn't come, if he, if he doesn't go into a program and he just cut, cut you can die from literally right. stop, right. stopping, stopping. And drinking. we try to take him to therapy and the therapists say, well, we can't help you till you're not an alcoholic and the alcohol and the alcoholic people say, can't help you till your brain's healed. So where so are you we were do? stuck. So we were stuck with just an appeal to heaven. Like we have to just love this man to healing. And we did. And in 2000 and 13. He Kansas um, comes in our lives by Kansas, the way. Kansas, the Kansas Cowboy, he's our cameraman that's whole, that's at, the, uh, um, at the conference. He's so much more than that. But um, our uncle has these seizures, and we end up in the hospital. And after taking care of him from 2003 to 2013, it was 10, 10 years, years of buying his scotch, buying his, his beer. And it was so funny for us, the, the, the teetotalers to go to the, the, the store and come out with these 30 packs of beer, yeah. buying these yeah. cases of scotch down in Kentucky to save some money um, and <laughs> crossing state lines. And, uh, and we just knew that it was God and we didn't know how it seems so counterintuitive intuitive. Right. And, uh, and so he has these strokes and he goes to the hospital and this is when God speaks to us and he says, he's coming home and he's not going to drink anymore. Cause he was, he had detoxed in the hospital. So that, that was part was over. Thing. That hurdle was over. There's no excuse. So his sons who we love, they're like our brothers. We're in the hospital and we're like our uncle's caregiver. And, uh, and I remember having a serious con conversation with my one cousin and he looks at me and he said, and I said, Jeremy, he's coming home and he's not going to drink anymore. And he says, Michelle, I know that you believe that but I know my dad, I've known him my whole life. He, life he's never going to stop drinking. And he's a Christian. My cousin, Jeremy is a Christian. And it was just because he's, you know, he's seen his dad just his whole life, just, you know, stubborn, stubborn. And, uh, and I said, no, this is going to happen. And he came home and he has not had a drop of alcohol since 2013. And, uh, I kid you not. And, um, I know he, he got home and he had agreed. We said, you can't come home. 
That was 2012, actually. 2012. I said, mm-hmm. you can't come home unless you, uh, you know, you agree to this. And he says, okay. So the next year he gets this, it's a long story, but I'll just sum it up. He gets a tongue cancer and long story short, God hooks us up with these, this doctor who's now our friend, weird. Um, and he takes a part of his tongue off. He takes a hunk of his le- arm. arm and puts it in his tongue and he takes a hunk a of his leg, leg and repairs the arm. And he repairs crazy. this guy. And, the, and, he's and then they told had- him. Go ahead. Well, he's always had social anxiety. So like he couldn't go, he wouldn't go out to eat. He wouldn't go to a movie. He wouldn't, he just he went to the pub. Leave. His life was literally just the pub. After, after his, after he shut down, he just wouldn't go anywhere. And, um, right. after this healing, he didn't smoke, he didn't drink. And we got a prescription to go on a vacation. So we went to, so we convinced my uncle, this is huge to go to Plymouth, Massachusetts, where we, where the, uh, Kirk Cameron did this movie called monumental, where there's this right. monument about the, to the forefathers. And we highly recommend everybody see that. And, uh, we were able to get him there and we've taken a couple of trips with him and he, now we can get him in the movies and he's just a different person. He's totally so that's different. like a whole story. But like in this time, I know what it's like when you feel like you're called to do something and sometimes it's not time yet, or you don't, you don't have the light. So as a teenager, God told me, you're going to be a minister. You're going to be an evangelist. You're going to get up. You're going to talk to a bunch of people. But he said, you've got to grow first. You've got to mature first. I was leading um, at 17 years old evang- at, at Rama. I was leading people in, in a, um, street, street ministry, ministry. Um, people going to Rama. They didn't know how to lead people to Jesus on the street. And I'm like, let's go. So I'm, I'm 17 and I'm leading people from, from, well, 19 to 55 or whatever. And we're, and I'm showing them, this is how we get people saved. This is how we get people filled with the Holy spirit. I would pray. And I'd be like, God, where can, where's there somebody? So Michelle and I, I, we went to a restaurant, we get the waitress saved. We get her filled with the Holy spirit. We go to a park, we get people saved. We get them filled with the Holy spirit. And God's like, this is all great and good, but I need you to take care of your family first. I need you to put yourself on this back burner. And so basically we've been burning or simmering on the back burner but in this time god was growing we have us. grown we have matured and we and, did so you know jesus healed. says um the greatest among you amongst you must be the servant, servant of all. all so when we were taking care of my grandma you know you're you're cleaning up messes that are not awesome she had friends that would have us like can the girls come and do this and we would go and do it and so we did we've done all of the servant jobs servant. that no one wants you know yep. serving servant yeah, that's and and we've done that and we've lived it and it creates something in you that other people that that don't do that will just never have. Yeah. And 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 blessings. Like so when we bought the house, we bought this house after my grandma passed away. We learned how to do drywall, plumbing, electrical, um, framing out, putting in brand new windows. I mean, you name it. Leah and my mom and I, this was Kansas was not in our life at that time. I learned how to tile a bathroom. I mean, we just became, we could, we could wield the chainsaw and an ax with the best of them. We became these kind of roughneck, you know, we grew up in the city, but we became kind of country. And then we started and- homesteading and, and everything has just grown and more. And this into- land has been in my family. And yeah. so like, we kind of feel called to be here. Like we yeah. feel like God wants us to have farms and land. Like a big and tons one. Right and now tons. we have an acre and a tent. But this is our land. This is God. God gave this to my, my great uncle, Charlie. He's had it. He bought it with gold and silver. Like my mom always talks about. And when you're, when you're where God's called you to be, you're anointed to do it. And yeah. so when we started to do all our little farming stuff, because we have pigs, we have chickens and, and we have our garden, people would just stop their car and, and just and be like, can in. I have a it, tour? Can we have a tour? Can I have a tour? People bring their I'm kids. like, I don't know. I'm kind of busy right now, but I guess their so. neighbors, we constantly have people bringing their families over just to see what we're doing. And we are, our testimony is getting people back to the land, but getting their hands in the dirt, healing their bodies, their minds, their souls, and recognizing that God put Adam and Eve in a garden. And, you know, Monsanto, when you realize, you know, they're poisoning our food, they're putting like animals in cages. Um, this isn't natural. And so right. everything connects. The, the spider webs all connect big pharma, big ag, um, big government. Yeah. And I want, and it kind of sum it all up because there's so much more to, to bring us to resistance chicks that started in 2017. Uh, when Donald Trump was inaugurated, mom's like, well, you guys could become professional YouTubers. And we were like, uh, okay. Cause I always study the news anyways. So we started our channel. It went viral. We started, we would have, 
you know, thousands and thousands of views right off the bat. It looked like we were going to be able to be professional. And YouTube then was sending us big fat checks every month. And then, and then in the middle of that year, we covered Charlottesville. Uh, we had a video that went viral, 160,000 views in less than a day. And so, and we had like 10,000 subscribers in six months. And it was, we were getting one to 200 subscribers every day, every, every day. day. And it was crazy. It was awesome. It was so much fun. We'd go live. We'd have 2000 people there with us. It would be so much fun. And it was like the, then YouTube caught on to what we were, who we were. And they put us in what we call the YouTube, basement. the YouTube basement so that we weren't allowed to be in the carousel anymore. We, we our videos wouldn't come up. And then they kept, and the, what Leah's talking about is we have a channel right now, resistance chicks. When we started our channel in, in 2017, we had two channels. We had a channel that we had already been doing homesteading videos on called Mass Faith 3. And that's the channel that she's referring to. We just uploaded all of our Resistance Chicks videos to both channels. Thank God, because that made it so we had Resistance Chicks as a backup channel. But because our Mass Faith 3 channel was already established, that's the one that exploded. And uh, that's where we had the most of our subscribers. And that's the channel that got deleted. We had like in 2 January. million views on the channel within a, uh, I think a, year. a year. It was ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah, it, it was, was amazing. And it was, it, it, I feel blessed though, because Alex Jones was like censored that year and all these other people were being censored. And so we got in on the tail end. So we didn't, so our livelihood wasn't affected by it, but then we could feel what everybody else is going through because we're in a transition right now as a country, as a people, as a world. And that's why we're connecting right now. And that's why we're connecting with you know, you're with Scott McKay and Ann Vandersteel and all these different people, because we, all of us, we are hearing the rumbling of a different kind of battle happening. And we are, we hear the trumpet sounding that Jesus is coming and he's doing something and we want to do it with him. Right. And it's good. And I want to encourage everybody. This is not the end times Okay. If anything, like Lynn Wood was saying, if this is a false end times and a false rapture, God is doing something good because the devil is being exposed like never yes. before. And all this time, like I know now my whole life and now Chris, your whole life has led to this moment when we're supposed to bring people truth. It's going to be a crescendo. Hope. It, I, I mean, it already is. It is. It's already happening. It's already happening. I'm not even going to say it. It's, it is going to be something because I've seen the dominoes falling. I'm seeing people waking up. I'm seeing people so thirsty and so hungry for good news. The field is so ripe. Yeah. Your testimony. Yeah. You got to sell that to everybody. Jesus set me free. Jesus heal me. You say it's so nonchalantly. Oh yeah. I was beat up. Oh yeah. My dad beat me. Oh yeah. This, oh yeah. That this is mind blowing your testimony. When people hear, Oh, you can be all of this and all these horrible things can happen to you. And you can end up where you're at right now yeah. with a gift and a calling and a voice. That's the message. That's the gospel. And that's what everybody is ready to hear right now. Like a Mike Lindell, he just coming to know the Lord, all these people, Mike Adams, just coming to know the Lord, all these, it, this is literally, here's the thing. You know how I know it's happening because you just got saved about a year ago. You're part of the great awakening. This is the third great awakening. And it's here you are part of it. And then you spread it. And somebody, that's how this happens. It's like COVID on steroids. You know, when, when this went down a year and a half ago, two years, I remember sitting there going, God set me up for this right now. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Everything I went through, because right. I went through and I'm like, I'm bold, I'm stubborn. I, I, you know, I, I, I love on people. Yeah. Protector, you know, he set me up. He right? did. And I'm bold enough that will get other people not to wear face diapers, not to get the right. pokey pokey. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I'll walk yeah. up to you right in your face and tell you where other people won't. I if love it. People just stand by and comply and let people walk by them with face diapers and their children. You get saved right as COVID hits or right before? I, I, well, I would say, I would say right before, because mm -hmm. what was happening was that's when I started looking up the Illuminati. Okay. Mm, that makes and sense. And, and, and so and then I got struck by a demon Three months I was bedridden. I couldn't do nothing. Wow. I was paralyzed. I couldn't go to the gym. 
I was a sleep deprivation, like 20 hours a night. Wow. I, I couldn't do hot. I couldn't do cold. Like how I have my arm like this laying right now. No way. I would be reeling in pain. Wow. And after that, I didn't know what was happening. Then um, I said, God, listen, I've gone to every doctor. Everybody says there's nothing wrong with me. Okay. So it's either I'm crazy or there is something evil, you know, that is wow. on me. And I said, you are the only doctor that can heal me. So if you want me healed, please heal me. If not, I'm okay with it. Within four days, I was healed. Get we out. Went to Mexico. We went to Mexico. I laid there. And even though there was a little bit of pain, I was drinking. I was eating. I wasn't doing anything crazy. Came home. Started going to the gym, started working out, nothing. No way. It was good. Five, four months later, I woke up and I went like this, right? Mm, fire. I was like, no. I looked up. I'm like, no, no. And I, I had the same exact problem. Oh, my gosh. But this time I found out because God was like, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what you are going to do the rest of your life. Wow. And so what happened was I had this minister from Africa on Facebook Messenger at 12.03 in the morning say, hey, Chris, I just went through your profile. I just want to tell you, you're a strong um, you're a strong man and you're going to do special things for the Lord, but you need intercessors. That was the okay. He said, you need to be in prayer all the time. You need to have everybody pray for you because you are going up against the evil because the evil, listen to what he says, the evil is on you. Mm. And I text him, I go, what do you mean the evil's on me? Like the evil's in me, maybe evil's with me, but the evil's on me. Yeah. Oh, so my buddy, Jason, who's a chiropractor. I was like, Jay, man, like, can maybe like you do something well, he said, Chris, I didn't want to scare you. He said, but the three weeks that you came, he goes, I don't know how you healed. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, well, you see right here, you had a boulder, a boulder on your right hand side of your shoulder. You also had a boulder on your left. Wow. I said, Jason, how can that be if, I, if I'm using my right arm? He goes, I don't know, brother. But he said, you know what's the craziest thing? When I took your x-rays, five, six, seven, and eight on your neck was pinched. If you connect the dots, mm -hmm. you have an upside down cross. Whoa. So when that minister, what that minister was telling me in Africa, he was right on, was that their evil is on you. Somebody put a major curse on me or had wow. whatever, but put me down. So at a one year out of the yeah, one year, five months out of the year. But then God was like, that's what you're going to do. You're going to expose and expel demons. Wow. Oh my gosh. Wow. You're going to sniff them out. You're, I hear them. I can hear them. I hear them sometimes at the end of my bed. You know, I've been hearing explosions for the last year, nine months, nine months to 10 months. I just hear explosions. I don't, I don't, I don't see what it is. Like when we're in Tulsa, I was laying in a hotel, had just gone to sleep, and I was like, boom. And I'm like, well, guess the hotel just blew up. And I just laid in bed, like didn't even move. So wow. I hear explosions. And at first, I was like, well, maybe it's the world that's going to happen. No. Do you know what it is? Mm. It's the explosions of the Christians going to Christ. That's so good. Oh, oh my I gosh. Have that, is that is so, so awesome. Good. It's going to be the explosion of people coming to the Lord. It's going to ah, be the explosion of people meeting like us and yes. Scott and Ann and Mike Adams. That does not, that doesn't happen by accident. Yeah. That doesn't happen by accident. You know, so, like with your past, like, I think for a lot of people to understand, um, the devil gets in through abuse and through pain and, we have these open doors in our lives 
And a lot of times we don't recognize that we have an open door and it's called going through the healing. And sometimes you get to the point and I want to encourage people, you'll get to a point in the cycle of your healing. And you'll be like, I thought I went through this already. I thought I was over this already. I thought the devil was, this is, this was very interesting. So as a Christian, you can't be possessed by the devil, but you can be oppressed and entrapped by the devil. Yeah. So the devil can't be in you but he can be on you. Yeah. Okay. And you can have a sickness, you can have a pain, you can have, and that's why I think Christians need to understand that we're not always, if somebody knows Christ as a believer, we're not going to go cast out demons. The, the devil's been, you know, cast out, right. Um, unless they go back to the devil on purpose, but like a Christian who's like seeking God, the, the, a, demo, a, a demon can come to oppress. And what do you do in those moments? You say, I cast you out in the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. Cause I've been in places in my own room when I felt evil in that room, mm -hmm. but God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power of love and a sound mind. And a lot of people who like, it's not your fault, but like sexual molestation and uh, all these things, they, they open up doors in our minds to the devil. And abuse is, is the worst. Yeah. Yeah. Emotional is. Persons is, I was talking to a woman today about it. It because is. Because emotional is, it, it attacks you in your heart, your yeah. head, and your body. Right. So your mind, body, and soul are affected emotionally. Right, 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 right. But physical, it's not. Right. right. It's mostly your, your, your body, maybe a little mentally, mm -hmm. but when it's emotional, it's immediately mentally right to your soul mm -hmm. and your whole body. Yeah. Right. And it can kill oh, you. Absolutely. It can oh. kill you literally. So, so that's what Michelle was, Michelle has this whole teaching is called sin is sickness. And you know, the scripture in the Bible, did this man sin or did his parents sin or was it for the glory of God? You can sin equals sickness. It doesn't have to be your sin because what happens, the devil just wants to steal and kill and destroy. And he and will he get at you with sickness, any door. So you, if you have a tiny open door to someone in your life and their sin mm -hmm. can get on you and make you ill. Exactly. So, so when I look at it, you know, the, every, with that scripture, what Leah's saying is there are exceptions. This man was, is sick for the glory of God. And then there's a healing. Okay. Right, right. Right. And so when you look and you people, a lot of, a lot of people ask like, why is so-and-so sick or why am I sick? I feel like my life is right. Your life probably is. You probably don't have any sin in your life that would equal that sickness. It's so when I pray for people a lot of times and they say, Michelle, can you pray for me? I'm sick or is my friend sick or whatever. I don't pray for the healing. I pray for the root to be exposed and cut off that is allowing that sin to get into that person's life to and make sick, them sick. To make them sick. That's what I pray. Oh, the thoughts or the brokenness. The Bible yes. says that a broken spirit dries up will dry bones. up your bones, but a cheerful heart is good, good like, like medicine. medicine. It's not enough just to be la just to laugh or whatever. Cheerfulness, real joy. The joy yeah. of the Lord is strength, right? It's so so the devil. The devil comes to you as a kid and he wants to break you because he wants to take your strength because he wants to take your joy because he wants to take your self-confidence. And like, okay? that's like when you said what, what came back to you was now I'm joyful. Like I was always joyful on the outside, but on the inside, I was negative. Right. And now I have joy on the inside, not just on the outside, you know? So that's an amazing part of your testimony, I think. So listen to this. So at the show in Penn State, Guy stands up and we're doing question and answer. So I'm holding the mic, you know, it's like the resistance ships, right? I'm holding the mic and he goes, can I start off with a uh, joke? I looked at Scott. I'm cool. You cool? Scott's yeah. He goes, first, I have never, ever seen a person with more wardrobe changes than maybe RuPaul at, at a drag show. Oh my gosh. And baby Trump. I sat there, I smiled, I laughed a year ago. I would have whooped on him. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, there would have been no smile. Yeah. And I smiled so hard and laughed and I, and I loved on him. And he yeah. looked at me and I hugged him. I actually put my arm around him. So yeah. Like, oh, you're cool, man. It's all right. You know? And then Scott was like, oh, you don't know baby Trump. And, 
you know, and, and Scott just loved on me for like 30 minutes, you know? Aww. What's so cool is that now nothing offends me. Wow. Wow. I don't get offended. I don't, I just love on people. Mm. I, you know, a year ago, if you would have told me, Chris, you have a podcast, you're doing very well. You're, you're, you're going to be doing a book. I think I told you girls, did I tell you, you that? Did. That's so exciting. Yep, yep. So I'm going to give them definitely tomorrow. I'm going to give them my answer. And I want you girls to be there with me. I want you to be on tour with me because I want <laughs> you, I do, I do. Don't even laugh about it. We're going to make it happen. Watch. You'll see. <laughs> well, you'll have to make a stop in Cincinnati. Absolutely. And yes. so I, um, I was sitting there and I'm like a year ago, if somebody said you're going to take the back seat to some other podcaster and you are going to take care of that person and you're going to make sure that person's okay. And you're going to lift up that person and you're going to serve that person. And you're going to put your life on that line for that person. You only know him for a month. I'd say you're out of your freaking mind. Do you not know who I am? Mm -hmm. I'm a lead singer. I'm the pitcher. I was the quarterback. I don't right. back up for nobody. Right. But the Lord had that different. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. He will lift, uh, you, lift up. you up. Isn't yeah. that crazy? Like, all, like within the year, you know, that's what I mean. It's so crazy. I believe right now I can't love on people enough. Hmm. You know, when we were in Tulsa in, in the morning when I was doing baby Trump and dance and getting everybody going. Yeah. Shut the music off. I was like, okay. He's like, show everybody how to hug. I mean, that came out of nowhere. Oh my gosh. Wow. And so I showed people how to hug. And what that has done is an explosion of this love where people are coming up and going, I'm teaching my mailman had a hug. I'm teaching, like people are teaching other people how to hug. Yeah, I love it. I mean, that to me, never mind the YMCA and fighting Antifa and everything I did. On my tombstone, I want to be known as the man that showed the world. Had a hug. hug. Oh, that's, that's awesome. so awesome. You need to do one of those hugging videos. Have you seen people do those? Where yeah, they just like I, let random strangers come up and hug them. Well, I need I need journalists and I need a camera to follow me. That's <laughs> yeah, I, you, you know do. What? You absolutely you know, do. You know what? Why don't we do that in Tampa? We should do that in Tampa. We should do that in Tampa. Well, I just be good. Up, hey, do you know who this is? This is baby Trump? And then I'll I'm gonna show him how to hug. And oh you my go, gosh, I love it. There you go. I love it so much. We, that we, sounds we, good. Woman. Hey, how did that make you feel? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. How did that make you feel? That's because awesome. That's what we got to do. We got we to gotta lift one another up. Right. We got to serve others. Because to heal one another, the only way to heal one another is through love and, and right. serve. There's no right. other way that you right. can. Because people right. don't care what you know until they know that you care. That's Aww. so good. Aww. No matter what I know. People don't watch my podcast because I got all the information. Mm -hmm. Very good information now. But Mel K does too. And there's other people. The people will watch me because they know I care. Yeah. That's good. People know you care. You will, they will come. Right. That's awesome. That's right. We always say to, to people, you know, you can tell a true minister when you walk away from them feeling better about who you are. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, like I can tell, I can spot kind of a, 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 not a fraud minister, but just a minister that's missing the mark when you go to talk to them and it's all about them instead of them asking about you, right. you know? And, um, I think for the listeners here tonight, they've been able to see the, we did that together. A give take. That's you what, what I mean. We've done that from day one. Like we, have. we just have that. And, you know, I know you girls are, your end game is a ministry. My end game is a ministry. Right. You know, and um, I just think 
I don't know. There's something in me, and I probably, I mean, I bug these girls. I bug <laughs> these girls. I could, and listen. You I, don't bug. I don't, I don't bug anybody. I don't, I don't bug Scott. I don't call, but you girls, I bug you. Like, I'm like, I got to call them. I got to talk to them. I got to call them. I got to talk. Like, it's like, I get up. I got to call them. I got to talk. I got to call them. I got to talk to them. Because I don't know. How about that? <laughs> I, don't I, don't, I don't know. 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 <laughs> it's not like, hey, I got the, I'm like, if I keep calling these girls, they're going to be thinking, what is wrong with this dude? <laughs> I think that you have a major calling on your life and you are a pretty new Christian, but in the span of a year, the fruit. So, right. You look at the fruit of the tree with the the anger of man can't work the righteousness of God. So if you want to be leading people to Jesus, you can't do it through the, the emotions of anger has to be through love Um, with your, with your trauma, with your childhood. What you're showing people is you don't have to be defined by your past. Right. And you can be developing as a person, as a Christian, like with Scott, uh, with, uh, Mike Adams, I was called one of them was Scott Adams. With, I, um, I, I did the same. I we did both. that with you on the phone the other, uh, <laughs> with Mike Adams, like he's a new Christian and he's yes. learning. Yes. So you get in the word and you learn and you ask the Holy spirit and guess what guys, you're not going to get it right in the first year. You're not going to get it right in the second year. You're not going to get it all right 20 years later. You're going to continue to learn and to grow and encourage everybody to be like, when you look back on your yourself 10 years from now, you're like, I wish I had known. That's okay. God is grace. God is mercy. God is forgiveness. You have to learn to forgive yourself. You have to learn to have a grace on yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to learn to have mercy on yourself. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, on the highway of holiness, even the foolish and the wayfaring man cannot err. Meaning that as long as you're trying to follow God, yes. as long as you're trying to be holy and righteous, oh, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to look stupid. You're going to say stupid things, but you're not going to mess up. You're going to be in his presence. He's going to protect you. He's going to have his hand on you right. and you're going to learn. And the, the, the best thing that we can be is so humble that we know that tomorrow we'll know more than we knew today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we'll be smarter and wiser and better. Like when it came to this COVID thing, I, I made some mistakes in that we're conspiracy theorists. So we follow the conspiracy theory. I didn't know that China was putting out disinformation. Yeah. I didn't know that those, those videos of people falling over dead were faked. So I got, I got caught up in the COVID fear because we had caught it. We were the earliest show to catch it. We were covering that in January. Because the mainstream media was saying it was no big deal. Right. And so we thought for sure. Nancy Pelosi was visiting people in in Chinatown telling people it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. And I'm hearing that it's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Now I know it's a Chinese psyop. And now finally a year and, and we caught on fairly quickly, but like my mom almost went to the hospital because of fear, because everybody would say people over 65 were, were, and she's not even 65 yet, but right. people over 65, it's like super deadly. And, and we were spraying down all of our packages and we already do like healthy things like with thieves oil and stuff like that. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing to be clean. Right. But the fear like God all does five not- of our cars broke down we didn't have any pet visits. Like it was like a terrifying time, but I recognized that the fear, the fear is what allowed a k- kind of a, a uh, domino. domino effect of, I would say kind of bad things happen was it wasn't really bad because God had me because I'm on the highway of holiness, but yeah. it could have been a lot better. And so this year, you know what I'm doing? 2021 fear. You have no place here. Yeah. You have no place here. I'm not walking in fear. If something exactly. puts that spirit of fear in me, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I cast you out. I have the joy of the Lord. I have his strength inside of me. And we're going to the next level. Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. Yeah. Shame on me. Right. And so here's, but here's the thing. I'm cool with that. I learned something Yahoo. And now I'm better. Yeah. I'm stronger than I was a year ago. So who cares if I, I missed something and I was fearful for a moment. Okay. My mom had a panic attack is what she had. She thought she needed to go to the hospital because she thought she was having like a heart attack. It was a legit panic attack. And at that time, thousands of people were going to the hospital with panic attacks because of COVID. Who does that? That's the devil. That's not God saying to be afraid of something. 
Nope. We and that's what Tulsa is about. That's what Tampa is about is casting out the spirit of fear. fear. But okay. guess what? We're taking with it. We're taking down the guess what? It's like glue. So your spirit of fear. Guess what? It's stuck to the Illuminati. It's stuck to the deep state. Mm -hmm. It's stuck, 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 stuck. Yeah. And we're taking it all, all down. down. It's happening. And that's why we're dangerous because yes. the fear of the Lord is our strength. The fear of the Lord. And it's not fear, tremble fear. It's awe, reverence. reverence. God mm -hmm. loves me. God is great. God has good things for me. God doesn't want kids in sex trafficking. We're going to stop that in the name of Jesus. <gasps> yeah. Right. Yeah. We're not going to sit here and cry and cry and cry and whine. We're going to do something about it to stop it. Yeah. Right. So that's what this whole movement is all about. And that's why I love you. And that's why I love all the people at, at the conference with all their conspiracy theories, uh, whatever. Some of them are right. Some of them are wrong. Do you love Jesus? Mm -hmm. Are we going to fix it? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Let's fix and it. Even though we were poisoned in Tulsa. Yeah. <laughs> 14 of us to go into the ICU. If you think wow. about it, that is half of us. Wow. Right? Half of the, uh, speak, the speakers, you know, you know, um, but the, you know, the one thing that I love about you girls that I got to see tonight, I think I fell in love with you all over again. And I think you need to change your telephone numbers. Uh, because Aww. I think I'm going to call you every day because I saw a side of you tonight I, you know, in Tulsa, I got to see you on the other side. I got to see, you know, you guys as the resistance. Right. right. I got to see you as Leah and Michelle. Yeah. And that's how we feel about you too, though. Honestly. Yeah. I just, man, I'm sitting here going, I want these girls on my show once a month. Once <laughs> a month. I know my flexies are going to want it. I don't care. I don't care what I got to do. I know you're busy. I'll come over and I'll have to, I'll have to what, pet your goats yeah. or something. Yep. Goats or, goats or whatever I got to do. But um, I love, I love talking to you. I, you know, when I, and can I tell everybody what happened? Yeah. So Scott, I don't know if you're watching this or not, but um, I had a conversation. I actually, it was, it was late too. And Leah, the natural beauty she is, she didn't have any makeup on, la di da da, you know, for the camera. And she came down because she's just a beautiful woman. And we were talking and I was telling them how I felt. And I was saying, you know, I feel like, you know, God is wanting me to do this work. And I feel like I'm a butterfly already ready to just burst out of the boot. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't get out. Like I'm just like there's like tape around me. Like I can't get out of this cocoon. And we prayed, we prayed that night. The next morning I got a flyer from Scott and it was for Portland. And I called and I, and it wasn't even under his name. It was under David Harris. This is what I didn't even tell you this. So it was under David, Har David Harris. And I thought, Oh, David Harris Jr. Cause I thought yeah, that's what I would think of. Yeah. Right. And so I'm like, oh, is this David Harris Jr.? He's like, no, this is Scott. We met in D.C. And then we met again in Tulsa. And I was like, oh. And then we talked and he's like, you know, I'd like to have you speak in Portland, Oregon. Oh. And I was like, oh, who's going to be there? Um, and he said, you know, I said, uh, Ann Banner. So I'm like, okay, that's my sweetheart. I'm done. I'm there, you know? Yeah. And so um, when that happened... I was just, wow. And do you know, ever since then, that butterfly, the book deal, you know, mm -hmm. just fluttering, you know, going on tour with Scott, you know, three shows did, we did th two shows and now I'm doing a third. There's like five shows, I think total, you know, with Scott and, and to what you said, right. That butterfly just burst out and it was you girls that I went to and I couldn't went to anybody. And um, that I, I don't know, that I just felt that led to, like, if that's weird, you know? And I was like, I, I need to talk to these girls. And you prayed over me. And ever since you prayed over me, the blessings keep coming. That's like, awesome. The acting audition. And, you know, I blew that. I, I didn't blow it off every schedule bit till. Um, okay. Then. But, you know, that came out of nowhere. Yeah. And, and to what you girls said that night, I don't even know if you remember. But you said that 
God is going to expose you where no man will be able to hide you. Oh, wow. That's good. I don't remember that. That's good. <laughs> that sounds good. Now, those are my words, but that's... You right. Know, I get, yeah, yeah, I get I what get you're that. saying. But that's what you were saying. Mm-hmm. God is going to put you out there in the light and, and nobody's going to be able to, to hold you back in the yeah. door. And I when that resonated with me and then the next day that's then, awesome boom, boom, and it and it hasn't it literally hasn't stopped dr mark sherwood actually is gonna start doing uh ads on my podcast too so. oh that's awesome no way. Yeah. oh that's awesome so i'll tell you what we have to go because i gotta get a shower and and we got to start back over in the you morning but i want to podcast. huh huh we didn't take a shower. Before. I did. Uh, yes. Leah was Leah literally. Really? I, Leah came from the horses. I was. I wanted to take a picture to send to you of what I looked like before. I I was. I had my hair in French braids. I was covered. My mom was like, "Oh my gosh!" We. I had just flexed the the heck out of pulling these giant things up on our deck that we do every year for our, our plants that we do on our, our really cool deck. Little and I was so dirty. I didn't have makeup on. I was ridiculous. I was like, I need to just do like a selfie. Hey, like, Hey, Hey, Chris, I washed, I washed myself down. Now I have to see, here's the thing. You see this hair. It's yeah, not I like see. your hair. It yeah, takes I a know. long time hey, to dry. Hello. That's not godly. That's not very godly. You said that. What did I say? You said oh. it's not like your hair. I, oh. I I do the best that I can with my short hair. That's why I, I went to my hairdresser today, sat there for an hour. I called, I go, where are you? She goes, uh, I'm off today. It's tomorrow, dummy. Oh dear. That's so funny. Oops. That's not like something I would do. Oh, dudes, dudes little. have it easy. You go in, you shower, you come I out. Know. Oh, done. Right. But no, seriously, um, we got to go, but I want to pray. And right, we'll just pray on, on air with we pray before okay. we pray. Where can people find you? Okay. Most importantly, how can people help you with your ministry? Do you are you taking donations? Please let people know. Okay, so the best place to find us is resistancechicks.com. Website. Um, it's fun place website to be. Is, Hang out is, there. And it's, it's, it's integral that people go to the website and sign up for the emails because we're so censored. We're not going to be coming back to YouTube. I don't think we have a third backup channel resistance chicks church that go we, in you can go subscribe to that. I don't know how we, long that'll be around resistance chicks church. We'll upload to that. Um, it's, it's crazy. Like, you know, to have all these multiple channels. Um, but we are on, um, bright which is Mike Adams platform. Rumble and BitChute and huge Facebook. on BitChute. So B I T C H U T E. Yeah. It's amazing. So um, those are the platforms that we are on. We're on every, we're on Telegram, D Live. We have, so we have a podcast. So every time we do a show, which we go live every Friday at, at 6, 6 o'clock, 30 ish. And then on Sundays at one, um, where we do our European and UK news. But, um, the podcast, uh, every episode that we do, we convert it into an MP3 and it's on pretty much anywhere where you can get a podcast Pod we're there, and Stitcher and all Stitcher. of that. Then, radio. Um, right T on, you're going to have what your own chat. So, well, yeah. Um, hopefully if that all works Mike out, Mike Adams offered us a slot, he's going to be doing bright T on TV where they'll run like a television. And, uh, so he offered us, I think a weekly segment Starting on that, around, on around that show, July-ish. I think it's going to be in like July. So, that's so exciting. I'm really, really stoked But on about the website, that. you can get all the links to all the spots. Yeah. And everything is on, everything is on our website. Just go to, I think the contact or about section or whatever. Yeah. Um, we do take donations. We don't ask for donations. Right. Anything that people donate to us goes back to resistance chicks. Like we're going to Tampa any donations are going to go to send us there, that kind yeah. of thing. Like any equipment that we buy, all donations There's get a little recycled paid how button on our website, but back into the show. We don't advertise it. Yeah. If we don't. somebody well, hits somebody, some people find it, they hit it and they do. And that our viewers have been really awesome. Yep. So I'm going to tell everybody out there that I want these two scrumptious cupcakes with me in Tampa Bay. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do part of what we're going to do. 
So please donate to the resistance chicks. Let them, let their cup run over it. These girls are doing God's work. Thank you. They're Thank you. They're using his words. Obviously you heard them tonight. They're so anointed. You know, it's one thing to have one anointed, but when you're doubly anointed, you're doubly anointed. <laughs> So now I'll, I'll let you lead us. In. Yeah. So I always felt led if you were like, to, you were going to go to Portland, Oregon. All right. And you've been saved for about a year and God puts a great anointing on people who are newly saved and all these butterfly effects. So what we're going to do is we're going to pray that we're going to pray against spiritual attacks because yes. he's going to listen. Don't be surprised. If you get attacked with depression, sadness, things, because guess what? Turn it into a positive. Say, God, what do you, just like you did, just like we did with the channel going down or whatever. Okay. We're going to take the attack and we're going to turn it into, we're going to attack the attack with positivity, with the anointing, get into the word. Sometimes you may need to take a sabbatical where you just take two or three days, maybe two or three weeks. And you're just alone with God and you'll come out refreshed. If you come out on the other side, okay, because you're going to be attacked, but the Jesus says, be of good cheer for I've overcome the world. You're an overcomer, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing this because it's going to come. And if you're pre if you're prepared and you are like, and Vander Steel, steal the truth. If you are flexing your truth, if you, if you're flexing it all, we've come to realize you can ride the way the attack. That's it. It, the, it, we, we, People used to say that to me, like, you're going to, you might be attacked. And I'm like, don't speak that over me. No, 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 no. no. We've come to realize that when an attack comes, that's literally a God given opportunity to, to do something, something huge. Back. Let me get, a, the wave could wash you over or you could ride that. Puppy. Let me explain something. When the devil attacks you. Yes. He becomes vulnerable. That's so good. He is opening up himself. Yes. So if you're being attacked by the devil, catch this, catch this, everybody. You have an opportunity to go take back something from your childhood, something from your past, something that from the devil future. has stolen from you, yeah. from your future. Okay. So if you can take a situation that seems negative and say, okay, God, turn this into a positive, it'll turn a, a lump of coal into a diamond. Yes. So the attacks you learn and I'm telling you, I'm 40 years old and I've just learned this this year. Every little thing that might be like an annoyance or something negative, pray about it. Seek God, speak life over it there's because there's, there. there's a treasure under there. Yeah. And when you recognize and the devil's trying to keep you from getting to something it. and you get excited. Okay, God, what's the treasure? Boom. He's gone. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. He's gone. And so I'm going to pray. That as a new Christian, gets you don't need to do what I've had to do or other Christians do. When it comes, you just want to weather it. No, you take it, you ride it. So isn't that like kind of a boxing thing? Like if yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I was thinking that. So, so you go with the punch, up, right? He's yeah, going to okay. open himself up. And that's, that's it. I got goosebumps. I got goosebumps. Yeah. So take, ride the punch, right? So- most Christians do this when the punch comes, they go like this. But as a boxer, you know when the punch comes, you, you gotta go. he's vulnerable, right? And he can no, you gotta go, vulnerable. and then you can go, right? Yeah. He you you go. It's gonna hit. Bad things are gonna happen. You, you it's but gonna then hit. They're exposed, but and then you, you go come back it, in. Then you come back. Okay, so let's pray. Let's pray that you do that in a powerful way, Father God. I thank you so much. For Chris Eriks, I thank you that you know he did change his name because he didn't want to take this generational curse with him. Amen. And there's an anointing there and there's a power there. And I thank you, Father God, that you have redeemed his past, that you will continue to redeem his past. I pray, Father God, for the viewers and everybody right now um, who may have had abusive childhoods, that you speak life into them, that they don't have to think of their past mm. the way the way it happened, but the way it should have been. I yes. had a loving mom. I had a loving dad. We went to Disney World. You know, <laughs> we did these things. They instead of the baseball bat, he he brought me ice cream. They loved me. They cared for me. They they wanted to come to my games. They wanted to be there because God, that's the kind of family that you would have put me in. It says the Bible says you put the the, the fatherless, fatherless into families. families. And I thank you. For 
Father God, that you've created a family here with, you know, Scott McKay or, and other people for, for Chris, uh, especially coming into the body of Christ. And I pray that you expand his family, Amen. that he reaches out, that he has all these brothers and sisters in Jesus and they're constantly loving each other and constantly lifting each other up. And I lift over this event in, in Portland and this tour and we bind and gag Satan from it. Yes. Father God, I pray for protection and I pray for wisdom. And I pray father God that Chris Eric's will get in the power of God. He'll give him the anointing and he will take the power of God and the anointing to Portland and they won't know what hit them. <laughs> You're not anger, not violence, yes. not words, but you just stun him with the power of God. You go yes, up to somebody, Lord. God loves you. He has a call of your God in your life. And instead of fighting Antifa with words, you're going to fight him with the love of God and they're going to get on their knees and they are going to get saved and they're yes. going to know the love of Christ. They're going to get filled with the Holy Spirit. There's going to be uh, people speaking in tongues. There's going to be people baptized in the Holy Spirit. There's going to be an anointing because it's ripe and ready. You go in that that organ is not a place for the devil. America, there's no place in America for the devil, but That's we are right. claiming that land back for Jesus right now in the name of Jesus. We are claiming Portland and as this team goes there wherever their feet go yes, is going to be claimed Amen. it's going to be steps of the blood of jesus Hallelujah. around the blood of jesus to set these people free from the brainwashing of communism oh this is a spiritual battle they're going to go in with tens and thousands of angels they're going to wipe that city clean of the demonic presence in the name of jesus and the whole city is going to say what happened here because chris Ayers came in and scott mckay came in and and they came in rushing on a mighty wind with the power of god yes. and the power of the holy spirit I pray, I pray for healing. I pray for a healing ministry. I pray that where they lay hands on people, people will get healed. Yes, people Lord. will rise and walk that their brains will be set free and demons will get, and cast demons out. will be cast out. I pray for, uh, divine appointments in, in airports and, um, that Chris Eric's will have these moments where he is ministering to people and he is going up to people saying, God gave me a word about this. Yes, God gave me a Lord. word about this. God Amen. wants to heal this part of your life. God wants to yes, heal this. Lord. Can I pray for you? Can I lay hands on you? Can we get, can, can, can we get in the Holy spirit together? And he's going to bring able to bring revival, but he's going to do it from a place of humility and a place of love and being led by the Holy spirit. I thank you, father God, that you have a call on his life yes. and, and that you take him through the waves that come and that you help him to mature and grow. Yes. and to become a father of the faith. So he begins to minister to people with, with a father like heart in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Woo. This is the part that I suck at saying goodbye. I know. Oh, it's I not know. goodbye. It's just later. I know. See you later. I, I never, I never know, you know, I never know how to, how to say goodbye. I never, I guess when I love, when I'm around people that I love, I never, I never even want to say later because you never want it to end. You always want to have a good time. And I love yeah. that. And you have I a love good that. Somebody, whether just talking to them on a podcast or when I talk to you on the phone, it's, I never, I mean, I don't think we've ever talked for less than two hours. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so. I don't know. It's like, it's like, it's like the, all you should do, you should be like my therapist and just charge me by, by 30 minutes. Like, oh, Chris Eric's again. Okay. <laughs> Start the timer. Oh, you're so great. Leah's trying to read the chat. I've had the chat up mom's, on my phone. Oh, mom's been commenting know, the whole time. Crazy. Yeah, you guys are awesome. To any of our viewers that are here, make sure that you're subscribing to Flex the Truth One. Um, because I know there's some of our viewers there in the chat. So Flex the Truth One. Mom says uh the Dems want people to focus on uh January the we don't like to, we say, don't like to say it on here no, uh, and the trouble they caused to all the Christians and uh, the prayers were wonderful. And there was a great move of God. So I was on, fifth, was on the fifth. There was a revival. Well, I did, on the fifth, I actually did a prayer worship on the Capitol stairs. That's amazing. And the Lord brought See, me to do that. That's why the, that's why the demons want to focus on the next day because that we streamed that whole thing. God was moving on that day. And guess what? He's not done. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Like, and he, and I went through like fighting with the devil and I was like, you know what? I got to go through this. Cause God said, no matter what, whether yes. you're tired, whether you're, whether, because the woman I was doing it with women for Trump, she was a nightmare. I was like, God said, no matter oh, what, no. listen, he said, no matter what happens, you got to do this. That's good. And I was like, why do I have to do this? Like, why me? And I was like, all it is, it's praise and worship. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm going to be dancing around and everything. But when you think of that day, 
Kenneth Copeland had his permit pulled at the very last minute. I didn't know that. Yeah. And he was the one to do the um, the walk of, um, of uh, what should we call it? The Jericho March? Jericho March. So here, all, and I kept saying, you don't want me to advertise more? You don't want me to advertise? He said, I do not want you to advertise. I want you to go there. I want you to play that music. I want you to dance in that spirit and they will come. And I remember putting the music on and I remember raise a hallelujah and I start dancing and then, boom, like out of the bushes, people just came. I saw and that. I like, what is going on? And yeah. it was the people from the Jericho March mm-hmm. that was looking for something. Okay. They had nowhere to go. So oh, wow. Like the Lord had said, there's going to be people there. And they're going to need I love that. something. And, you know, and, and what's even crazier, two days prior to that, I was not on the Capitol stairs. I was in front of the reflection pool. Mm. I was where my permit because the, the Capitol stairs, listen to this, was locked down. Wow. Wow. That's that. great. And then all of a sudden, the next day, when I called the sergeant, she goes, Chris. I said, yeah. She goes, do you want the Capitol stairs? And I was like, what are you talking about? She goes, it's open. I was like, How? She's like, now, if you do it, you got to go through another vetting. I said, I don't care. I, will, I, will, I don't care what I have to do. I want it. And we did it. And isn't it crazy the next day what happened? Oh, my gosh. That's crazy. That's amazing. That's an amazing part of your story. Wow. We'll have to go deeper into that when we have you on our show um, yeah. soon. So, yeah, we definitely want to make that happen. Um, thank you for having us on here tonight, though. We love Chris. the flexies. We love the flexies. And I never and remember which are my flexies. We love the resistance chicks. Yeah. But I'm a flexi. Well, girls, I will talk to you later on. If there's anything I can ever do for you, please, you know. Yep. You've done Same so here. much for me. So, excuse me, so much for my heart. And um, it's just great to know I have somebody right down on the turnpike. Like, there you go. Yeah, we're good, far. you know, and I, I, pray, I just want to let you know every day I pray for you girls Aww. that you will make enough money. Thank you. Oh, that's to get so rid sweet. of Dr. Doolittle Land. And okay. Be able to I serve love it. Others and do God's work. Thank you. Amen. I'm with it. I'm, I'm with you. I, believe, I give you I receive an amen. It. I receive that for sure. I receive yeah. it because you're needed right now. You know, people can take care of their own pets. You don't need to do God's work. <laughs> okay. I love it. I believe it. I'm with oh, you. Oh, you're so awesome. Mwah, we love you. Okay. God bless. All right. All bye. Bye, Leah. Bye, bye, Michelle. So, guys, that's the resistance chicks. I mean, obviously, they have a name resistance because they have resistance. You heard about their life, you know, and that they just go through it. They plow through it. But most importantly, I think that you've learned something tonight that they don't just go through it. They grow through it. And because they grow through it, there are these two beautiful God-fearing women, you know, that are, are going to change lives and, and make such a difference in this world. You will remember the name Leah and Michelle for years to come because of the ministry that they're going to have, because of the lives that they're going to change and make a difference. You know, and what I love about them is I got to see a side of them tonight that I didn't get to see in Tulsa. And and the reason being is because when you're on the mic, you're a different personality. When you're not on the mic, you just open up and, you know, they're an open book and you can see why I love them so much. And what I've learned is that God is putting people in my path like an explosion, an explosion of God fearing people. You know, and, and also people that are not, you know, safe. And and I I have talked to them and had conversations. You know, one of them is is you know gonna be my bodyguard in Portland. And I want to share something with you guys. When we were on stage uh, at the end, uh, the pastor was praying, and I just felt it to put my hand on Dennis's shoulder <clears throat> and uh, prayed. And when we went up to the room, he said, Chris, I got to tell you something. I said, what's up? He said, man, when we were praying, 
you put your hand on my shoulder. He goes, I felt, he goes, I don't even know how to explain it. I felt like this heat, but like this electricity go through my whole body. And I said, yeah, that was the Holy Spirit. Welcome mm -hmm. to the Holy Spirit. Welcome to the rest of your life. And, you know, with him being with me on tour, he will be saved. He will mm. know Jesus Christ. He will be a warrior of Jesus Christ. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to serve other people. We're here to lift people up. We're here to construct others and not destruct them, right? There's a big difference. We're here to put deposits in the people and not take withdrawals out. People are leeches. People are always looking, what, I, what can I get from you? Instead of looking what you can get from somebody, how about saying, how can I deposit something into you? Mm. How can I deposit the, the, that, the breath of God in you, the word of God into you today? So guys, you don't know why I love the resistance chicks. I'm sure you love them after today. Please follow them. Please donate to them. Remember one thing, you're worthy. And you are a miracle. Don't let anybody ever tell you anything other. Somebody calls you a name, you have a bad day, say, you know what? I'm worthy and I am a miracle. And guess what? Always flex your mind, flex your muscles, but above all, flex the truth. God bless. See you tomorrow. Hey, you girls aren't supposed to be on there. <laughs> you snuck back on. You we did it. I'm we waiting for you to hang anywhere. up. I'm waiting for you to hang up on the call. I can't hang the phone up. Oh, are we supposed to have hung, hung up? We don't do yeah. Zoom. I tried to tell you I don't know anything about it. Can't hang the phone up on you girls. Oh, okay. So we gotta we have to do it yeah, our, on this cool. end. I can't. I can't get leave. Okay. You have to leave. We're gonna leave then this time for real. I'm gonna press the leave button. This is how much we know about Zoom. Okay, leaving by. Bye. Bye. Leave. You have to hit it again. Hey, okay, hang on. <laughs> Love those girls.